the familiar skyline of the city of Chicago on a beautiful night. Temperature about 67 degrees, absolutely no wind, a perfect night for football. A couple of miles south on Lake Michigan, the fabled old arena. Soldier Field sold out tonight, 67,000 for the Minnesota Vikings and the Chicago Bears. Hello again, Frank Gifford with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. Important game in the NFC Central Division tonight. Both the Bears, the Vikings coming in at three and two. The winner tonight will move to within one game of Detroit, the leader in the division. The loser will drop two behind. For Chicago, maybe a little more important because they lost to Minnesota early in the season in September, but since then, they've won three in a row. And here in Chicago, with Dave Wanstead now at the helm, they are not thinking about rebuilding. They're talking playoffs once again. Meanwhile, the Vikings went to the playoffs last year under their new head coach, Dennis Green. They were 11-5, and they bring their defending champion, Chip Team, into Soldier Field tonight, adding a little color, a little drama, if you will, Al, by starting former Bears quarterback Jim McMahon. As he said at the very top, he just knows how to win, Franco. He does it in some very unusual ways. When you look at the Vikings' three wins this season, they have scored a total of 40 points. That's 13 a game and three victories. And those numbers don't lie. They tell you two things. Number one, they are struggling offensively. But more importantly, they are playing very well. In fact, terrifically well defensively. Statistically, they are number one in the National Football League and going up against the Chicago offense that's really struggling. What they'll try to do offensively tonight is get a big play or two from Jim McMahon and also to juice up the offense, we're going to see a lot of their number one draft choice, the rookie from Ohio State, Robert Smith. And so the Vikings come in, Dan, to take on the Bears, and for the first time since 1981, Monday Night Football comes to Chicago, and there's no Mike Ditka prowling the sidelines. No, but at least the new coach has a mustache and an offensive tackle, so you know he's going to be great. Good guy. <laughs> You're right. Dave Wanstead is the guy here in Chicago, and he inherited a team that in the past we've used the three words to describe old, small, and slow. Well, they have gotten younger, they have gotten bigger, and they have gotten faster. And they become more aggressive, especially defensively. This is a defensive team that has allowed the fewest number of points in the National Football League, only 59 through five games. That is strong defensive football. If one player personifies the real rejuvenation of the Bears, it'd be defensive end Richard Dent, who's had the best start of his career with seven sacks and one interception to get this season started. By the way, the number one draft choice of the Bears, Curtis Conway. Look for him to see a lot of football tonight as well. And we are going to see Curtis Conway immediately because the Chicago Bears are going to get the ball. Juan Reves puts it in the air for the Vikings, and he sends it two yards into the end zone. And this is Curtis Conway, and the number one draft choice from the University of Southern California is finally knocked out of bounds by another rookie, Kadri Ismael. Curtis Conway, who figures to play a very big role offensively with Wendell Davis now gone for the season, runs one back 55 yards. Well, Curtis Conway was a 10 to 800 meter track man at USC, as well as setting a multiple number of records on returns, punt returns, and kickoff returns, showing the speed that Dave Wanstead loves. Good breakaway speed. And Minnesota was offside. Clearly the penalty is declined. The Bears take the play and begin at the Minnesota 47-yard line. With eight completions tonight, Jim Harbaugh will have completed more passes than any quarterback in Bears history. And we'll take a look at those to complement Harbaugh after the first play. First and 10 from the 47-yard line. With Neil Anderson in the backfield, a fake to Anderson. Harbaugh over the middle to the tight end, Chris Kedney, the rookie from Syracuse. And that's a first down all the way to the Minnesota 27-yard line. The rest of the offense now, they begin with Anderson and Craig Ironhead Hayward, the ex-Saint. Waddle and Conway start at the wideouts, and Jennings will be the tight end, and it'll alternate with Gedney, who made the last catch. Lewenberg, Borch, Fontenot, Wojciechowski, and Ozine, who played left tackle last year, making his first start this season. He's been hurt. He's on the right side now. First down, Chicago at the 26-yard line in the opening minute of the game. Hayward in motion, stays in the block. Anderson takes the swing pass, and Neal is run out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Now the Vikings, number one defensively in the NFL as week eight comes to a climax. A base 4-3. Marker, great tackles in Thomas and Randall, and Dolman, of course, has been to the Pro Bowl a number of times. Jenkins 
Del Rio in the middle and Fred Strickland the X Ram and a very good secondary with Lee and McMillan at the corners Scott and the ball hawking Vinci Glenn are the safeties second down and eight for Chicago at the 24 yard line Neil Anderson goes nowhere he is necktied as he gets out of the backfield by Barker loss of one Dave Wanstead, who made his mark in recent years as Jimmy Johnson's defensive coordinator with the Super Bowl champion Cowboys, could have had the Giants job. He had his choice, either New York or Chicago, and opted to come here. Four-year contract with an option. Anderson set in the slot Gedney goes in motion Hayward the sole setback and on third and nine it is dropped by Neil Anderson would have had a first down a flag is down referee tonight is Johnny Greer good hard count by Harbaugh there could have pulled Minnesota offsides and Harbaugh under a lot of pressure tonight with the return of Jim McMahon I'll tell you another guy who's under a lot of pressure, and, and that's Neil Anderson. Uh, the folks in Chicago are waiting for him to explode Offside. a little bit. Left you see here tackle. where we get the Vikings across the ball, down. and this is really a reprieve for Neil Anderson, who dropped the ball, an easy ball to catch on third down. But Tim Worley, the former Pittsburgh Steeler, is now a Chicago Bear, and the folks in Chicago have waited patiently for quite some time for the old Neil Anderson to reappear. He better do it before long. Third and four, that's Anderson in motion. Two minutes into the game, the opening drive of the game. Harbaugh with a deep drop, and then he throws, and only linemen are there because Chris Dolman deflected it. So Butler and the field goal unit come in. Harbaugh looking again downfield. Good coverage downfield on the part of the Minnesota Vikings, who are lying heavily on his own defense, as they did in the early part of their first game back in September. And Harbaugh under pressure had to get rid of him. Kevin Butler, who has scored more points than anybody in the history of his venerable franchise. 37-yard attempt. Chris Gardaki, who is the punter, to do the holding. And Butler puts Chicago on the board. Thanks in good measure to the 55-yard run back of the opening kickoff by Curtis Conway. Early on, Chicago 3, Minnesota nothing. Nights where if you could adjust the thermometer one direction or the other, you wouldn't touch mm. it. It's absolutely a perfect night to play football. Chris Gardaki kicks off. It's a short kick. It's taken at the 11 by Padre Ismail, the rookie from Syracuse and the brother of the Raiders, Rocket, the former Notre Dame star. And Minnesota will take over, trailing 3 0 with Jim McMahon, the longtime Bear. Then he went to San Diego, then he went to Philadelphia to back up Cunningham and signed as a free agent with the Vikings. Jimmy Mack. And those who work with him offensively in a one back set, Barry Word, the three wideouts, the unrelated partners, Anthony and Chris. And Ismail, the tight end Jordan, and the guys up front, Everett Lindsay is a rookie from Mississippi on the left side. On first down, this is Barry Word, the former Kansas City Chief. Oh, and here we go right off the bat. John Tice and Richard Dent. These two guys have been warring at each other ever since the first game. John Tice, their number 87, when the game was over and the Vikings had won, accused Richard Dent of quitting. He said in the papers afterwards, Dent just actually flopped down, buried himself in the ground, and quit. And Tice has really incited a real Chicago, well, a defensive uprising, if you want to call it. They are out for some Minnesota Viking flesh here tonight, mainly John Tice's. Second and six, and Barry Word again gets stood up, and you talk about a gang tackle. Yeah. How many midnight blue shirts in that pile? To the 25-yard line goes word. It'll be third down and four. I keep saying John Tice. It's Mike Tice. But Mike Tice, well, here, take a look at this gang tackle by the Bears. Mike Tice just 
got on these guys. Here goes. There's Mike Tice, number 87. There's Richard Dent, 95. <laughs> and that was no surprise to anybody. You could tell by the crowd reaction. They've been waiting for this thing all night long. And Dent has been waiting for this game ever since the first Viking game. Third down and four from the 25. And McMahon's first pass of the night. Instead, he scrambles, throws on the run, has a first down. Steve Jordan, who's caught more passes than any Viking in history, at the 40-yard line. And so Jimmy Mack buys time and picks up 15, and the Vikings convert first down. That's exactly what he did, Al. He rolled out and spotted Jordan, who gave him a good passing angle to get the first down. Up front for the Bears, Armstrong, McMichael, Zorich, and Dent. With Vincent Smith, the ex-Cowboy, Dante Jones takes Singletary's spot, and Kane, the ex-Hawk, Seahawk, Wolford and Blaylock, the corners, with Gale and Carrier, the safety from the 39-yard line. And this is Robert Smith from Ohio State, their number one draft choice, the rookie who will be worked more and more into the Viking lineup, picking up eight, and he'll have a great opportunity now to shine because the guy they would have counted on this year, Terry Allen, was hurt in preseason. We're going to follow this all night. Here's Tice and Dent, and that is really a good block by Tice as he gets into Dent and takes him back off the ball. Another look at it. That's a good drive block by a tight end. Mike Tice, a big guy at 6'7", and he'll be over on that left side a lot tonight, helping out the rookie, number 61, Lindsey. He did a job there. Yeah, that was a good block by Tice. Second and a long one. Smith scoots to the outside and takes it to the 41-yard line of the Bears for another first down. Zorich and Gale converge on the hit with 9.40 to go in the opening quarter, and Chicago up 3-0. Smith certainly a different runner than Barry Word. Smaller in stature, too, about six feet. Looks bigger than that, 195 pounds, long legs. A great speedster as a freshman at Ohio State, over 1,100 yards rushing. Just remark production. He, will, he won't be 22 until next March. So he's a youngster and a talented one. First down, Vikings at the 41. A toss to Smith. Hello. Up from the secondary <laughs> comes Donnell Wolford. <laughs> And that's one of the reasons I think Wolford signed the biggest contract for any defensive player in the history of the Bears. I don't know that big at 5'9", 185 pounds, but he can really hammer you, too. Seven interceptions a year ago, a Pro Bowl spot. Just a, one of the fine defensive cornerbacks. Watch it right off his feet. Second and eight at the 39-yard line. Eight and a half to go first quarter. Three-nothing Bears. The fake. McMahon buys time, throws wide open is Chris Carter, and he has a first down as he takes it to the 25-yard <laughs> line, tackled there by Vincent Carter. Smith, and Chris Carter has become Jim McMahon's main man. And for good reason, because he produces. He runs precise routes, and he seldom drops the ball. Here's a guy that initially was known for that excellent fade pattern. He'd run into the end zone, but now Chris Carter owns the entire field, and he's not afraid to catch it in traffic. Part of that is because of his outstanding size at 6'3", 200 pounds. And this is something the Vikings do better than the Bears, and that's run with the ball after they catch it. That's an area the Bears would like to be more like the Vikings. First down, this is the eighth play of the drive, and it's a Barry Word run that goes nowhere. He is stacked up by Dante Jones and others after a minimal, if any, game. Dennis Green. Last year, as a rookie coach, was one of three rookie coaches to take his team to a division title. Bill Cowher winning the AFC Central at Pittsburgh, Bobby Ross winning the AFC West at San Diego, and Dennis Green winning two out of every three thus far in his budding NFL career. He shows he's a man in charge, too. Earlier in the season, after what, a couple of games ago, he said, hey, we want to go a different way with my personnel than we're going. And he changed offensive coordinators. Jack Burns was out. Brian Bellick is in. He said, we're going to run an offense that we have the personnel to produce with. Second and 10, McMahon under pressure, but escapes and turns what would have been a sack into a small gain. Stopped at the 22-yard line. Chris Zorich will get credit for the tackle. Boy, all great quarterbacks feel what they can't see. And I, I think that time that McMahon felt Richard Dent instead of being able to see him. Watch Dent come here on the near side. 
Jim McMahon's right-handed, looking downfield. Look at that, that little step up. Richard Dent would have had him with the left hand, and yet it's that instinctive move forward up into the pocket. All great quarterbacks have always done it. Jim McMahon, no exception. Third and eight from the 23. Good protection, then he throws to Chris Carter, but underneath and not nearly enough for a first down. Jones and Mangum are there to stop him, and Fouad Reves will come in to attempt about a 38-yard field goal to tie it up with the clock running in six minutes to play in the quarter. A little bit like we anticipated. Both teams tough on defense. have had difficult times moving the football. We've seen both teams move to within field goal range, and then both teams have been stymied. Yeah, we got a chance for both teams to have scored on their opening drives. I would not have bet on that. No. 39 yard attempt for Juan Reves, and it is just good, just inside the right upright. So each team with three off their opening drive, 534 to go in the first quarter. And there he is, watching the game, enjoying the action from a private box across the way here at Soldier Field. Oh, what a tight end hit me. Yeah, and I'll tell you, he kind of uh, had a chance to play coach tonight. He went down and gave a little talk to the Chicago Bears about an hour before the game down in their locker room. Here is Reves, and Reves has had a lot of trouble this year with kickoffs. They've been very short, and he finally boots his first touchback of the year in this the Vikings six game. 529 to go first quarter the game tied 3-3 and the Chicago Bears first and 10 at their own 20 yard line. Harbaugh throws one out in the flat and that one goes through Anderson's hands. Neil Anderson who dropped one on the first drive can't handle this one either and it's second down and 10. The uncharacteristic of Neil Anderson over the years he's been a, as good a receiver as he has been a running back out of the backfield. Big part of the Bears passing attack over the years. A little high, but one you almost certainly have to catch coming out of the back. It looked like he just kind of lost it in the lights, and I've been down there many times, and you can lose it to the lights here in Soldier Field very easily. Second and ten. Harbaugh. That's the tight end. Chris Whoa. Whitney loses the football. Vikings get it. So the game's first turnover, a big one. Because the Vikings take over deep in Chicago territory, Carl Lee comes up with it. Boy, and this is what the Bears have avoided doing in the, over the last three games. They are plus nine in the takeaway giveaway, and they work on this all the time. And this is Gedney, the rookie from Syracuse, carrying it a little loosely, and everyone now more than ever is banging on that football. And that was just a good hit there by Jack Del Rio. Had his helmet right on the ball, and out it comes. And really, Carl, Carl Lee could have. Could have picked up the ball and taken off with it. He covered it up. There really wasn't a Chicago player anywhere near him. Check that out. That's one of the reasons they put together a three-game winning streak. Not since opening day have they coughed one up. Opening day, oh, they lost yeah. to the New York Giants. Here's McMahon on first down. Good play fake. Going for the home run and incomplete as the Bears are contending. It should have been offensive interference. Chris Carter and Anthony Blaylock were the principal performers on that one. And Mark Carrier moving over for the middle. Pretty bad read by Jim McMahon. That was double coverage. It was Carrier helping Blaylock all the way. 47 is Blaylock. Now did he get shoved by a number 80 Chris Carter? Oh, I'll tell you he did. He got mugged by Carter. <laughs> oh, Carter just grabbed him by the back. Now it didn't look like either one of them had a shot yeah. at the ball. It was so overthrown, but still. Chris Carter abusing Blaylock. Second and ten, and here's Robert Smith. Yeah. And the Buckeye is inside the ten. Touchdown, Minnesota. That's the kind of a touchdown that a number one draft choice makes. Ooh. That was an all-star move going from the inside to the sideline, Frank. Big time stuff. Yeah, he showed you a little bit of everything. He has the quick cut, he has the acceleration, and then he has the speed after he gets an open shot. Watch this. Pops through the hole. Break it out to the left. Right there. Plants the right foot. Totally gets away from Sean Gale. And then just outruns Blaylock. 
showing a little bit of everything. A very talented youngster, as Dan said, number one draft pick out of Ohio State, and we're going to see a lot of him in the years to come. He got an excellent block from Lindsay and a superb block by Randall McDaniel, his left guard on Dante Jones. Quad Reves bangs it through. 5:04 to go, opening quarter as they capitalize on the turnover. Do the Vikings to take a 10-3 lead? To Robert Smith for a touchdown, and that's the first touchdown the Bears have allowed after a turnover this year. They've allowed only three points off turnovers until tonight. Robert Smith. Puts it in the end zone. It's 10 to 3 and Reves to send it down to the Bears. Curtis Conway, who ran the opening kickoff back 55 yards. Funny, you've got the two teams in the, well, you know, the black and blue. They like to call it Central Division. Grind it out and all of that. One team picks a, a fleet wide out as their number one pick. And the other, a great looking running back. Conway and Smith. Conway drifts over from a yard into the end zone. And he's stopped at the 15, so after a 55-yard run back, this one is only 16 yards after the 15-yard line. Well, I tell you, today you walked around Chicago. It was one of the great days in the history of the planet. Uh, spectacular. What a great city to walk around, too. It is so clean. People should be so proud of what they've done. And the battle for second place. The winner tonight moves in behind the Lions. Five and two. The loser falls another one back. Here's Anderson. And Neal gets taken down from behind by the very quick Henry Thomas. You know, the, uh, the Vikings, a very critical six days. We just looked at the standings tonight in here as you look at Henry Thomas. And then they played Detroit next Sunday night at home. And we talked about it, how important it was for Chicago, having lost that game in September. Tiebreaker, of course, being standings in the division. And Minnesota, with a win tonight, would go one up on that. Second and 10, 4.15 left, first quarter, 10-3 Minnesota. Harbaugh on second and 10. Oh, had it picked off, and Carly might have had a touchdown. Big Carly didn't read that. Well, you know what that is. The Vikings are showing blitz. They all walk up on the line of scrimmage, so they know the Bears are going to go into their blitz adjustment. And they surely anticipated that the blitz adjustment rather than a fly downfield was going to be the short break off by Conway. Could have been Conway's nervous twitch when he heard the checkoff too. He, read, he knows that Harbaugh is going to deliver that ball to him. Lee reads it all the way. But there are two different routes that you can run on that blitz adjustment. One is the streak down the sideline and the other one is that quick break to the inside and the Vikings were all over that one. Third and ten and Harbaugh nearly has that one intercepted. Terry Ovi was the intended receiver, and Audrey McMillan nearly picked it off, and the boos are for Harbaugh. It does not take many incompletions in a row here at Soldier Field for the Bear fans to get on Jim Harbaugh. He signed a big contract. There was talk about the Bears looking elsewhere, and again, almost another interception by the Vikings. But Dave Wanstead said he is our guy. We looked at everybody that was available. None of them could do all the things that Jim could do. And we're happy. Chris Gardaki to punt it. Eric Gulliford is there to accept it. Calls for a fair catch. It's a 46-yard kick as he fields it at the 38-yard line. Viking ball, 3.55 left. First quarter in Chicago, 10-3 Vikings. Soldier Field, just south of downtown Chicago, hovering overhead is the airship Shamu, the SeaWorld blimp. Fitting place for a SeaWorld blimp right here on the edge of Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. As is Soldier Field, and one of the great vistas on a Monday night is the mm -hmm. skyline of Chicago and this stadium all lit up. And an NFC Central game, black and blue. I kind of like it. Works for me. First down, Minnesota from the 37. Jake Reed is in the game, the good-looking second-year wide receiver. And it's Robert Smith. 
We mentioned Reed's name because with Terry Reed Allen Reed. gone for the year, and they're going to move Robert Smith now into a more prominent role. And Jake Reed is also going to be used in a more prominent role. And there he is at wide receiver. As they, in effect, even though they're not saying it, begin to somewhat phase out Anthony Carter. Right there. And that's the look of a guy who's not looking to be a part of it uh, anytime soon. And it is Jake Reed's job to uh, to win or lose. He broke his leg and sprained his ankle in the second preseason game. And goodbye. Yep. And McMahon, well, McMahon oh. that time was not out of the pocket. And Trace Armstrong hammers him to the ground. If you're out of the pocket, you can ground it and nothing happens to you. Johnny Greer throwing the flag. Your initial reaction might think that's roughing the passer, but absolutely not. That, again, that rule stands pat. If you are just discarding the ball to avoid a sack and you are still between the tackles, that's intentional grounding. Trace Armstrong all over McMahon, and Jimmy just tossed it away. Intentional grounding on the quarterback. That's also a loss of down. Second down. Well, well there was no tight end on that, and... Trace Armstrong took the inside rush, and Steve Jordan was the H-back, and he released for the pass. Randy McDaniel just couldn't get to it. Yeah, they're trying to run a, a trapping action at Armstrong, thinking that'll hold him. Uh, guess again. He blew right by one of the great guards in the game. Well, he comes all the way across the formation. He, he has no chance if Armstrong goes upfield. Third and 23 from the 24-yard line. And it's Smith, and he gets stopped at the 25, and that arouses the crowd. Richard Dent makes the stop, and the Bears will get the ball back. Well, I guess if you're not going to block Armstrong, why even try to block Dent? Nobody touched him either. <laughs> the Vikings self-destructing here. No one even touches Richard Dent, and he's in on the play right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, I think it, uh, it's time to dig out the chalkboard on the Vikings sideline and start accounting for the Bear defensive ends. Harry Newsom having a great year, averaging 45.3 to send it down toward Terry Obi. 48-yard kick, and Obi gets tackled right away at the 30 by Jake Reed. Not only seeing more action at wide out, but uh, doing the job on special teams as well. Reed with a lot of speed and a lot of size. He's about 6'3", and he really hustles down on this punt. But as Ann pointed out, he had a lot of injury problems early in the year, broken fibula and an ankle, and he's just now back to 100%. It's in a good play on the special teams. Richard Dent, he's, he keeps his pace up. He'll be in the Pro Bowl. Neil Anderson gets about three. Anderson's been their leading ground gainer for the last six years, ever since the retirement of Peyton, but it's been a a series of diminishing returns for Neil. Second and seven. Next week, we'll be back in Buffalo. Dan still has his hotel key, as he told you last week, as the Bills host the Washington Redskins. I do still have it. You know, I found it again yesterday when I was packing to come here. It's a bad penny. <laughs> it's too late to send it back now. I'll just take it with me. Bills coming off their win against the Jets yesterday. And Washington just trying to get untracked. But some salesman from Iowa will be pretty happy to see me when I go walking in the room. <laughs> Officials, uh, they're all of Buffalo, will be glad to greet you. Yep. <laughs> they love us. Johnny Greer, that signal means us reset the, the play clock to 25. Bill's playing great football. The fine youngsters, Dennis Green, 11 to 5 a year ago. After three years as head coach of Stanford, Dave Wansett, 41 years old, and took a 1-15 and 15 team along with Jimmy Johnson. The Cowboys, four years later, they win the Super Bowl. Oh, what a play. Craig Hayward, oh. old Ironhead, the ex-Saint, does not get out of the back. And we'll see what the uh, what scoring uh, says about that. If that's a loss, if it is, that's big news because it's been a long time since Hayward has lost yardage on a play well what a play by Henry Thomas the nose tackle he just he just throws the center out of the way and he is on Hayward has him going parallel to the line of scrimmage and Barker comes in Jenkins they look at see he's the cocked one in there that's Henry Thomas boy that's quicks folks 
That is just somebody whose nerve endings move a little faster than other people. And timeout Chicago. Hayward had carried the ball a hundred consecutive times without losing a yard. By comparison, Neil Anderson lost yardage on six carries in his last game alone. So it's big news when you can stop Ironhead. Play clock had ticked down, and they were forced to call that timeout. Minnesota defense and they are very quick. They're not big. They don't have a linebacker that goes over 240. And John Randall, 6'1, about 270, very swift. Thomas, whom you saw a moment ago, 6'2, 277, just, just speed. They make a lot of deals on the inside. Barker has moved out to defensive left end where Al Noga was last year. Hutch McMillan, number 26, uh, and Waddle reacting to the. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, you understand that? I mean, he knows there's confusion going on over there. And it's a little bit of a psychological win for them. There is a either a victory or a loss on every play in pro football. Sometimes you win when there isn't a play. Third and eight, final minute, first quarter. Minnesota leading 10-3. Viking show blitz. They're not kidding either. <laughs> and Harbaugh gets blitzed and gets sacked back at the 27 yard line. Jack Del Rio and Henry Thomas just coming straight through the middle to get him. Now, sometimes they show blitz as a teaser. That was uh, that was not a bluff on the part of the Vikings, and it was nothing fancy. The guys just lined up, took a gap, everybody came straight. Yeah, I think Harbaugh was smothered. Probably we haven't touched as much as we should on the offensive line that the Bears have been shuffling thus far throughout the entire season. Here's Gardaki to kick. Eric Gulliford, the rookie from Arizona State, back to accept it. A 41-yard kick and a minimal run back as Gulliford is tackled almost immediately at the 33-yard line by Jay Lewenberg. 26 seconds now remaining in the opening quarter. <laughs> well, you know, when you look at these two teams and you, you figure out what's going to happen and the very potent defenses and the offenses that were sputtering, <laughs> you might have made a case for this one winding up 3-0 in overtime. 9-6 was a score that was kicking around my head. Yeah. It's, 10 points is a, a big day for both of these groups, and the Vikings have already done it in the first quarter. From the 34, Jimmy Mack throwing high. And incomplete. The intended receiver was Chris Carter. Talked about the Bears' problems injury-wise with their offensive line. The Minnesota Vikings, they lost three starters from a year ago, and they've been struggling also with that offensive line. And that ball thrown well over the outstretched hands of a six-foot-three Chris Carter. That was well out of the picture. Ooh. Brian Habib went to Denver. Gary Zimmerman went to Denver. <laughs> well, the Vikings have had to adjust dramatically up with their offensive line. On second down and 10, Barry Word up to the 40 yard line, gain of six. Dante Jones, uh, the guy taking the legendary Mike Singletary's place. Singletary retiring after last season. In on the tackle, and the clock will tick down, and the first quarter will be history in another couple of seconds. Well, Dante has been an understudy long enough. This is his sixth year out of Oklahoma. He's waited a long time to fill those big shoes. End of one. Back we come in the second quarter of Monday Night Football after this commercial and a word more ABC stations. That's Kevin Butler. He's had that piece of tape with Butthead on the back of his helmet. <laughs> there he is. All season long, you would think with the fashion police in the NFL finding guys for towels being too long and socks not being right, they would have caught him by now, but they haven't. They just did. Yep. Uh, imagine Big what time. his license plates say. <laughs> <laughs> Start the second quarter. It's third down and four for Minnesota. And Robert Smith takes the swing pass, but Donnell Wolford says... You ain't getting the first down as he stops it at about the line of scrimmage, and that will force a punt. Well, look at this. We've got Tim Irvin, uh, Tim Irwin, rather, uh, shoving some of the players around. Maurice Douglas, I think, was the bear on the receiving end. We've, we have some uh, hostilities here being generated by both these clubs. I think there's uh, a fair amount of talking taking place down on the field. And nobody said that you got to be French. 
Terry Obi to receive the kick from Harry Newsom. Fair catch is called for. It's a short kick. And Obi comes up to grab it at the 29 yard line. It's only a 32 yard punt. You know what Obi just did is one of the most difficult things in football to run upfield about 20 yards, weaving through traffic, at the same time looking at a punt hanging up in the air and go up and catch it. Mm -hmm. That's not easily done. And survive it. Yeah. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Merrill Lynch. For clients around the world, we make a difference. The difference is Merrill Lynch. And Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Bears football at the 29. Early second quarter. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff in Chicago. 10 3, Minnesota. Anderson, and nothing's happening. And Neal, who came into the game averaging a very pedestrian three and a half yards per carry, picks up only one here. Strickland makes the stop. And let's take a look at the numbers of the first 15 minutes of play. And minus three on the ground for Chicago. And turnovers equating directly to points. The one bear turnover, the fumble, immediately resulted in a Viking touchdown. And everything else is rather negligible, with the exception of the fact that once again, as we saw in that first run there by Anderson, the Bears can do nothing on the ground. Second and nine, and now they finally do something on the ground. As Anderson gets a big hole, gets across the 50, and all the way to the 39, a 31-yard run. Thomas making the tackle, and Curtis Conway through the block to spring him. Well, if ever a team, a player, and a running game needed a boost, it's been a while since anybody needed it more than the Bears and what they just got from Neil Anderson. Big opening over the left side where they've had trouble, and here comes Anderson. Watch him just kick through a tackle right there. Breaks it back to the inside, avoids another tackle, and gets the first down inside the 40. Just really, really took advantage. Days. They took advantage of the Vikings really blowing up field. They love to penetrate. And the 39, Anderson on the rollers. They give it to Conway. Harbaugh is out there to block for him. And Harbaugh throws a block, and Conway takes it to the 21 yard line. Oh, and he almost broke it. He almost stayed on his feet. Harbaugh not only threw a block, but the player that he blocked, I believe, is injured. Vincey Glenn. Yeah. He hits Vincey Glenn low, and Glenn tries to jump over him, and I don't know if he hurt himself when he came down and landed. Take a look at this. It's going to start to the left. The pitch to Anderson. It's a handoff to Conway. Now Harbaugh is going to come in. He's going to come back to the left and cut Glenn. Like his helmet might have hit him right on the knee. Yeah. But again, Conway almost stayed on his feet. Here it is again. Helmet right on the knee, and Glenn is still down. Injury timeout. See, Glenn, they're looking at him on the sidelines and looked at it again. It could be that he hyperextended that right leg. He's just, let's take a look again. Watch number four, Harbaugh, right there, into the right leg, and it might have been hyperextended, and they're looking at him at the moment on the sidelines. But again, Conway almost broke that tackle for six. 18-yard gain on that last play on first down. Neil Anderson across the 20, picks up two, tackled by Strickland. 12-15 to go in the opening half, 10-3 Vikings. I know that nose tackles in particular get away with crowding the football. But is it my imagination, or does it look like Henry Thomas is offsides every play? <laughs> this he is camped right on it. They call him the under tackle. Uh, he's he's right under the center's nose. He is. Well, look at this guy get up on a football. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look at this. But from our sideline camera, his shoulder pads are overlapping the center's helmet. <laughs> Second and eight. Harbaugh escapes Goldman. Throws into the end zone. Anderson touchdown, but Harbaugh may have been across the line of scrimmage. I think he was across the line, and the flag is down. Harbaugh, I believe, came across the line of scrimmage. And it's coming back. Harbaugh just a little indecisive whether to run or throw that football. Pulled it down, started to run, and then delivered the ball over the line of scrimmage. Ineligible receiver downfield yeah. on the offense, number 58. Well, and I think, well, probably. Uh, That's Jay Lewenberg, the left tackle. He probably thought Harbaugh was going to run it. Uh, he did think that Harbaugh was going to run it. 
He might. Well, let's take let's a look. Go, now. Did, yeah. did he go over the line to begin with? The flag. The flag came out of uh, the pocket of the official as Harbaugh released it. Well, he's, oh, he's pretty oh, close. close. He's oh. pretty close. But it doesn't matter at this point. It's academic because Lewinberg was in that look to begin with. As Harbaugh sends it out, and that's oh. Anderson's third drop of the game. Again, this is not characteristic of Anderson, and the balls have been so easily caught, and I think he's just well, thinking about running, trying maybe a little too hard before he pulls it in. Let's go back, because it was such a big play on the touchdown. The, the line of scrimmage was the 19. Cool. Lewenberg is on the 18 or the 17 and a half. So if we were calling it by the letter of the law, was the line of scrimmage not the 19? It was. It was the 19, so... Lewenberg was beyond the 19. But that's close. Dolman is way outside. Yeah. Dolman is way beyond the 19. Yeah. And what was a third down and 14 originally? That's the type of a play the officials are supposed to blow it dead. If a defensive player comes across the ball and has a free shot at the quarterback, they're, they're supposed to stop that play to keep the QB from getting hurt. You know, I'm offside defense. Go, go back to the, the, the illegal play, though. I'm not sure, you know, with Harbaugh, as we take a look at this last play, here's Dolman again. Yeah. Lo Lewenberg is only a yard downfield from the line of scrimmage. So he is not, in effect, an ineligible receiver at that point. I'm wondering if they will take a look at it again. Let's see exactly how far down he is. Well, the ball's already been released there. And he's at the 15. All right, we'll back it up. There's the release of the football yeah, it's seldom let's put it this way seldom will you see that called when it's that close the offensive line does get some leeway here's Anderson in third and nine and he loses a couple he is tackled by Dolman the crowd gets restless again and they'll have to settle for a field goal attempt Vincey Glenn, the report from the bench, sprained right knee, and they do not know on the bench right now if he'll be back. You know, Al, in that yard within the line of scrimmage, we'll have to delve into the rule book. I think you have to be in contact with another player mm -hmm. with that yard of the line of scrimmage. He was not in contact with another player. He was running downfield the block. Butler, 39-yard attempt out of Gardaki's hole, and that one is just inside the right upright. Kevin second of the game. 10.49 to go in the half. It's now 10 to 6. Right we did go into the rule book. It's a foul and an inel ineligible offensive player prior to a legal forward pass advances beyond his line after losing contact with an opponent at the line of scrimmage. So, in effect, they did go by the letter of the law. Lewenberg was ineligible, and the call was correct. That's right, because he was not in contact with another player. He was running downfield. Mm -hmm. Thus, the penalty. It was a good call by the official. And here's Tough break Ismael. for Chicago. Ismael. Running it back only to the 10 and Maurice Douglas, one of their special teams mavens, the longtime safety and special teams performer here, makes the tackle. Maurice has been mixing it up tonight with his uh, friends over on the Minnesota club. He's the guy that was involved with Irwin that time and a couple times prior to that, he's been right in the mix. Uh, right in the mix. Jim McMahon does pretty well against this division, and it doesn't matter what uniform he's in. 24 of his last 25 starts against teams from the NFC Central. Of course, he's had the good fortune to be with the Bears and the Vikings. Yep. The two dominant teams in the NFC Central. From the 10-yard line, here is Robert Smith. Flag is thrown, and Robert Smith on what would have been about a 12-yard gain, helped out by a Steve Jordan block, may see it negated. When the umpire throws it, it's almost always pulled. Still a fine looking run by this youngster out of Ohio State. Holding 76 offense. Still first down. So veteran Tim Irwin. And position to the goal. Well, the uh, Fridge, who sees only spot action. Well, that's spot action. Six snaps. Fatigue shouldn't be a factor. <laughs> First and 15, and he almost jumped offside. 
And here is Smith, and he takes it out to the nine-yard line. It'll be second down and 11. They went right at the fridge. Try to get him. It's been a, a storied career for William Perry. Tried to trap him. Yeah, there he is on the right. They're going to take advantage of him going upfield. And that's a pretty effective <laughs> block there by Scott Adams, number 72. That's an outstanding trap block. Look at this. Boy, that's the way to get underneath. And when you're underneath the fridge, you're underneath a ton. Second and 11 at the nine yard line. A real short drop and a quick pass, and that is Jake Reed making the catch. He's up to the 19, his first catch of the night, and he is short of the first down by about two. Well, Jake Reed on one side and Chris Carter on the other, and you have two six foot three receivers. And you see Jake Reed, second year man out of Grambling now. He gets hit pretty good by Blaylock. He holds on to the football and he carries Blaylock for another yard or so. And for a guy, Frank, coming back from a broken leg and a bad ankle, taking a shot like this down low, that's got to be a confidence booster for Reed. Indeed. His first catch of the year, third down and one, long one from the 19. McMahon on a roll and a pump fake and a little flip, and that is Chris Carter making the catch. And it appears to be enough for first down. Yeah, out there, that's pretty heady on the part of Jim McMahon. He was looking downfield. He was tempted to go down there, but he knew exactly what he needed for the first down, even though he was being pressured to deliver the football. He threw to the underneath man, gave up the attempt to go a little deeper, but he still gets the first down and keeps the drive alive. Well, just as important, Chris Carter knew exactly where the chains were and exactly where he could camp out and still move them. 8.30 to go in the half. Vikings 10, Bears 6. First down, Minnesota at the 22-yard line. Barry Word. He gets five. Word became expendable in Kansas City when they revamped the offense there and went with Montana and Allen. And then when Terry Allen got hurt in Minnesota, they were looking for a big back uh, to fill the void until Robert Smith was ready, and that's why they picked up Barry Word. Yeah, that's an awfully good back to get for a fifth-round draft pick. Couldn't agree more. He led the Chiefs in rushing a couple of times, had over 1,000 yards. In a There's Danny Aiello, the noted actor here on the sidelines. And he couldn't get Partaking seat, huh? tonight. Is he a Bears fan or a Vikings fan? Anybody uh, ascertain that? He was uh, very neutral in his uh, fashion collection tonight. <laughs> Second and six of the 27. Smith again, a yard, yard and a half. The refrigerator parries at the bottom of the pile, and Dante Jones on top. If the area you intend to defend is not any more than 10 or 15 feet wide, William Perry can do it. Good job of staying low, fighting off the block, and holding his ground. Range is the problem problem for William Perry. He just can't get very far from where he starts by the end of a play. You've been following the fridge. You realize he looks pretty sleek out there, Bill. Third down, long three. Not a word that's been used often to describe oh. it. Sleek. Look oh. out. Oh, and McMahon somehow avoids the initial thrust by Dent. But Alonzo Spellman is there to make sure he's finished off. Uh, I think he might have got put down with a concussion in avoiding the initial thrust of Richard Dent. <laughs> well, this is one of the few situations where the Vikings allow the rookie, Everett Lindsay, to be locked up one-on-one -on, -one on Richard Dent. 61 to your right is Lindsay. Dent's 95. Normally, Lindsay has help, and this is why. He gives that soft corner to Dent, and really a good job by McMahon of staying up. Newsom to punt. Obi calls for the fair Obi. catch. Ferry Obi hauls it in at the 36-yard line, a 38-yard boot. 6.22 left in the half. Minnesota by four. They got sack number eight for Richard. One of the other games, call your operator, cable operator for pay-per-view. Options is Harbaugh gets taken down by Carlos Jenkins. Two-yard sack. It'll be second down and 12. Boy, and one thing that's uh, become apparent here is we're moving through this second quarter of action and that is that the Bears offensive line is being overwhelmed by the front four 
of the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, they are not able to handle both the speed and the stunts being run by the Vikings up front. Under six minutes to go in the half. Chicago trailing by four. Second and 12. Harbaugh sends one to Anderson. And Jenkins rides him down and once that comes in and says that should be a personal foul. Now they went to face mask out of that. They're not going to get it. Dave Wanstead at the age of 41. Very sought after last year. A lot of options for him. We mentioned before, could have had the Giants job had he so chosen. Chosen. Well, that really was not a face mask there by Carlos Jenkins as he came across, but certainly was an attempt to remove Neil Anderson's head from his body. <laughs> Outside of that, nothing <laughs> Yeah, really. Third down and five. Harbaugh rolling. That buys time, but it doesn't necessarily buy a complete pass. No, sir. Conway trapped it. Short hopped it. 5.02 remaining now in the half, and the Bears, uh, with three and out, will punt. Harbaugh just a little late, under a little duress there, a little late picking up Conway, who was open. Found the hole in the zone, and Harbaugh, under pressure, couldn't find him. Gulliford to accept the kick. Gardaki to boot it. Wobbly kick. 39 yard boot. Gulliford runs it back to the 22, and that's where Minnesota begins its next series. Lundberg made the hit. The Bears are saying the ball was loose. It should be a fumble, and they have it. There's nothing yet from the officials. Bob Christian came up with it, and what are they going to say? Nothing. Zero. <laughs> Vikings ball. Yeah. Johnny Greer says timeout. Timeout for a commercial. Vikings have it. They lead it by a score of 10 to 6. You judge here. And as you judge it and take a peek, we can tell you it is now time for our regular feature on what's new in the world of sports science and technology. That was close. One of the great venues on the American sporting scene for decades, Soldier Field, hard by Lake Michigan. Chicago looking down from the airship Shamu, the SeaWorld blimp. 4.51 to go in the half. Vikings have the ball. They lead 10 to 6, and they begin with McMahon tossing it to Robert Smith and then running him out of bounds after a gain of one and a line judge going down as well. But getting up very sprightly was one Jim Quirk. Yes, <laughs> Richard Dent. I think he's still looking for you know whom. I think Richard Dent is playing inspired football. That's fighting off first the hit by Tice, then Lindsey on the block, and look at this work by Richard Dent. And keep in mind that he's locked up with Smith. He doesn't have any idea where the sideline is. So that's not a case of intentionally roughing up a player, although it is a case of roughing up, roughing up an official. Ooh. None the worse for wear is Jim Court, the line judge, on second and nine from the 23-yard line. Misdirection play here to Robert Smith, who runs it out to the 27-yard line. Chris Zorich, number 97, and Joe Kane make the hit. Well, that was good pursuit well, by wasn't. Zorich. Remember Dave Wansett yesterday telling us that he's playing as good as any defensive tackle he has ever been around? This number two draft choice a couple of years ago has really started to blossom. Four sacks from that interior line position. Steve McMichael, McMichael on the other side, he's got a couple of them. Third down and four. From the 28-yard line. McMahon, and that's incomplete. Carter, the intended receiver, that would have been short of the first down, and he was covered very well, so even had he held on they still would have been forced to kick 345 to go in the half. John Mangum right there with him and that would have been short of the first down. A little bit dangerous and McMahon throwing a pretty good lead on it. But Mangum right there on the coverage. All right, wanna, before we say to uh, Jim you got to point out he's not throwing the ball exceptionally sharp so far in this game nor has he so far this season. One of the things that Denny Green says we have to do better is our quarterback has to throw the ball better. Loosen a 41-yard kick to Terry Ovi. 
He runs it back to the 35-yard line. McMahon has also been uh, pretty thoroughly abused. He came in, there was 16 sacks. That often will get your attention, although he's one of the one of the strong ones around who he just kind of ignores all that. He has been pounded and beaten up, knees, shoulders, he's had it all. And I think the longest string he's ever put a consecutive games together without an injury is something like 10, at least after he left Chicago. Which was, yeah, one of the reasons why a lot of people were so surprised that the Vikings opted to go with him. And they, they looked at the uh, the normal guys who were out and available last year, Burline, Hostetler, but they chose Jimmy Mack from the 35-yard line. Harbaugh going deep for Waddle, and Tom Waddle makes the catch. The flag goes down. Well, it doesn't matter. He had it. McMillan gave him a major shove. Waddle comes down with the ball in any event. Uh, you know, actually, Waddle's the guy who started it by putting the right. The ball was underthrown. Waddle had him beat. But when the coverage starts to close, it's Waddle who throws his hand back. <laughs> Which may be why we have two, two flags. flags. You might have in late. Yep. You may have a two-way interference here. Yep. Waddle was kind of pushing off, and well, McMillan gave him a little shot. See, it starts with Waddle being about three yards past McMillan, and then the ball's underthrown. There's the right hand of Waddle getting some separation. It's the clock. First down. Yep. They called it against the defense, and they awarded him the catch. Oh. That's not a catch. <laughs> That's not a catch. That's not a catch. Yep. It makes no difference because the exactly. penalty was against the Vikings anyway, so if he, if they'd have ruled it a non-catch, they'd have awarded him the ball there anyway because of the penalty. They picked up about three or four yards because the catch was farther downfield than the penalty. On well, any event, they could have yeah. called that also against Waddle, too, but it was a great effort on the part of Tommy Waddle to even get in position to catch that ball. I, I would say that's a major break for Chicago. First and 10 at the 28-yard line. Harbaugh, look out, Dolman blindsides him. Ball is loose. And Bears appear to be at the bottom of the pile. And they are. I think it was John Wojciechowski who's going to wind up with the football. Well, they've been waiting for Chris Dolman to explode. That's really only his second sack of the season. And it's really just a good example of the upfield speed of Chris Dolman. And then look at this burst to the quarterback, Frank. Arbaugh's looking for Haywood to turn upfield. He just stood out there. And Dolman, who is so fast, just skirting around Lewenberg, nailing Harbaugh for the loss. You're lucky you recovered the ball. You're lucky you still have your quarterback. Second and 17 over the middle. This is Anderson. It's a four-yard game to the 31. Clock down to 240 to go in the half. Third and long upcoming for Wonstadt's Bears. Well, if any quarterback in the league can take a repeated pounding, it's Jim Harbaugh. Physically, one of the toughest individuals at the quarterback position in the entire NFL. Ron Turner is the offensive coordinator. For once, that's new staff. Third down, 14 from the 31-yard line. And he is sacked by John uh, Randall. And ooh, that's, uh, a, that's a sack that takes them out of field goal range. That's, and that's a sack that's very indicative. Jim Harbaugh doesn't have a chance on a play like that. Randall is so quick, and he didn't have a chance, and they move back out of field goal range. Randall just slicing in. Down goes Harbaugh to get the field goal attempt. Give it a warning. Beautiful downtown Chicago. Looking north in that shot. Go Bears, it says there. And we surmise that the Bears were taken out of field goal range, but they're going to try it anyway. But this is a, a dubious effort anyway. As you can see, Butler's never kicked one longer than 52. And this is 55 from the 45-yard line with two minutes to go in the half. And with no win tonight, Butler says, I think oh. I can make it. And he does. <laughs> he is. Missed a bunch of attempts from 53 yards. All time best for. You just assumed it was out of range, that they wouldn't even attempt it. 
<laughs> Congratulations there from his special teams coach, Danny Abramowitz. Oh, great. <laughs> Remember Dave Wanstead telling us yesterday that Butler drives him nuts during a game, get, constantly giving him a, an update on the wind direction and, and whether they're swirling or whether it's a crosswind. Well, in a no-win situation, Kevin Butler puts more leg into it than he ever has before. You know, he re reached that easily, and the concern, I would think, from a coaching standpoint, a kicker that has never kicked further than 52 yards is going to try to kick a low to low trajectory, and you could get it blocked. But this yeah. jumps off his foot up into the air. Well, how sweet also for a kicker who was really vilified by his coach, Mike Ditka, last year. The word gutless and other things used by Ditka to describe Butthead there. And Butthead comes through in the crunch with a 55-yarder. He, he also, you know, he's talking about the weather. Here we are in the Windy City, and there's barely a breath of a breeze tonight. So perfect conditions for him. As he now sends one, does Gardaki a yard into the end zone, Condre Ismail. Brings it back out to the 19-yard line, and there's a marker down at the 24. One yard. 148 left in the half. Johnny Greer will tell us against the Vikings. Longest field goal in the league this year is Steve Christie's 59-yarder for Buffalo. And uh, we understand that is the, this this place has been around for a Holding few years. 77 during the return. First down. That's the longest field goal in the history of Soldier Field. Is it really? Yeah. 55 yards. The longest was 52. Butler twice. Bob Thomas once. And Fred Cox from Minnesota against Chicago. Well, it's a natural surface. And usually the wind is swirling. Fred Cox, a conventional kicker. Yes. Yeah. Unusual to see one of that like wow the longest in history of this guy. From the nine yard line McMahon gives it to Smith. And now let's see if the Bears want to take a timeout. They've got him pinned. And they do want to take a timeout. Chicago now begins to conserve time. Remember they had to burn a timeout earlier. So they're down to one remaining with 138 left on the clock. That also is the it equals the longest field goal in Bears history T Bob Thomas a 55 yarder in 1975 next week we go to Buffalo bills are hot and tonight we thought it appropriate after yesterday's performance to visit at halftime and there he is live at his home in Norfolk Virginia where he's spending this off day Bruce Smith the perennial all pro defensive end of the Buffalo Bills and we will visit with Bruce at halftime Ooh, what a year he's having mm -hmm. And what an interception, Bruce, you made yesterday. Yep. That was, uh, <laughs> we'll take a look at that at halftime, but that's as pretty a picture as you'll see a defensive end. You think of Buffalo, and you think of offense, and Kelly, and Thomas, and yesterday it was the defense sure. against the Jets. Second down and 10. Minnesota from the 10-yard line. 10 to 9. Vikings on top. And McMahon, he's going to run for it. Steps out of bounds up at the 16-yard line. But that, uh, that does Chicago a little bit of a favor here because they're able to conserve a timeout up at the 16. And it compels Minnesota now to convert to avoid having to give the ball back to Chicago. It compels them to convert. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Is that kind of like they got to make it? <laughs> yeah, they sort of have to do it, you know. <laughs> Third and four. 132 to go. <laughs> I wonder if McMahon leaned in there and said, gentlemen, I'm compelled to call this running play. Yeah. <laughs> Would you mind executing it, please? Yes, with proficiency. <laughs> And he flips one out to Jordan, who can only get to the 20, but that might be enough for a first down. It's very, very close. Tackled by Wolford. And Johnny Greer may call for the sticks. Good low tackle by Donnell Wolford, who's been all around the football tonight. But it might have been the air travel. 
Let's take a look at it. Jordan goes up over the top, and by the time he comes down, he picks up about an extra yard from where he made contact with Wolford. Yeah, that and that's good, good enough for the first down. Either way, that was yeah. a heck of a hit by Wolford on a, t against a 240-pound tight end. Just well, stopped him right in his tracks. You notice he didn't go for the eight and the three. He's working a little bit lower than that. Good work by both players. Well, now the Vikings are in a position with all of their timeouts, if they so elect, to, to move it down the field. So let's see what their strategy will be leading by one. Whether they'll try to get within field goal range or just say we'll take that one point lead to the locker room. And McMahon's going to try to move it down the field. And he throws complete to Jake Reed, who makes the catch and steps out of the 33 with 56 ticks left. McCann over the years has been pretty cagey at moving that ball down the field in the two minute drill. Very heady quarterback, not the strongest arm in the world, but always plays within his own limits. Minnesota 10, Chicago 9, McMahon catching a glimpse of the clock, which shows 56 seconds. We finally catch a glimpse of Anthony Carter, who's split all the way up there to the top of the screen. Not been a part of this ball game. Now they go back to the ground. They give it to Smith, and he fights his way to the 39. That's a gain of six, and the Vikings spend timeout number one. Zorich in on the hit. <laughs> Zorich got a little grass on his helmet. Here. This must be a Cap Bozo fan. I could take just a moment, I, Dan and Al. We, we lost a, a great friend today, the world of football, Royce Box, an all-pro wide receiver for many years with the Detroit Lions, died at his home last night. And I just want to send all of my prayers and condolences along to his four boys and his wife, Ashley. And we're thinking about you. And we lost a great one. He was a, a real good man, obviously. Uh, Great friend, we you know we we showed that shot of the the grass and the face mask, and of course that uh, brings to mind the classic game here a couple of years back <laughs> on a Monday night. Caposo made the catch. <laughs> this sods for you. Yeah. They uh, thought that uh, that was a touchdown, ended up not being. They spotted the ball back at the one yard line. Harbaugh got it in on a sneak, and that was one of the more memorable finishes to a Monday night game. Second and a long three from the 40 yard line and Steve Jordan the tight end is written out at the 49 yard line but the Vikings are very much moving toward field goal range 44 seconds and two timeouts left. Minnesota going home next week they'll play Detroit on Sunday night in a very big NFC Central matchup and Chicago with another big Central Division matchup goes to Green Bay as Ravais gets ready to loosen up. It's a little hairy for Chicago. They have Green Bay and then they have the Raiders and Chargers and Kansas City, then Detroit. From the 49 yard line, McMahon protected well, throws, and the coverage was very good that time oh. on Jake Reed. Danell Wolford uh, was all over him. Wolford is turning in a Pro Bowl first half here tonight. He has been everywhere. One big hit after another, and this is just perfect coverage. The timing is immaculate by Wolford as his arrival on Reed. In slow motion, the left arm might get there a hundredth of a second early, but in live time, that's just excellent coverage. And that's an excellent shot of the football. Craig Janoff directing, Kenny Wolf producing. Good work, guys. That looks smart. Second and ten from the 50. They fake the draw. And Jimmy Mack is going very deep. And there's a flag because Blaylock was holding Jake Reed. So the Minnesota Vikings are going to get a big break here. Greer coming down to get the call confirmed. Blaylock had his left hand on the hip of Jake Reed. No, that's like he had his shirt. Pass interference. Defense. First down. Ooh. Stride for stride, and Jim McMahon really aired that one out. 
And that was about all he'll ever get out of that arm. That's a 39 yard penalty. That's Blaylock on the inside. Watch the left arm. No read. Stumbled a little bit and made it look a little worse than it was. That's a tough call. Yeah, the stumbling came because their feet kind of locked up with one another. Tough call on Blaylock. Real tough call. So McMahon now is first and 10 just outside the 10, and Barry Word gets it to the nine yard line. 28 27 and going down, and timeout Minnesota. They still have one remaining. Well, this has been a good drive by the Minnesota Vikings. They were in a position where conservative thinking and conservative play would have had them just sit on the ball and go into the locker room with that one point lead. This has been aggressive football and a, a smartly executed drive by the Vikes here as they move it down into scoring territory. Brian yeah. Billick is the man on the left. He is the new offensive coordinator after Jack Burns was reassigned and declined the invitation to become the tight ends coach. They moved Billick up and Billick has designed a a new scheme, a scheme more to Dennis Green's liking, and a scheme that on this drive has uh, led them from their own nine to the Bears' eight. Remember the sequence of this drive? It was the Chicago Bears that called a timeout at the very beginning of it, hoping that they were going to get the punt. Airship Shamu high above. As we approach halftime. Hey. Right on cue. Isn't that's it that. amazing? It happens just yeah. when we put the camera on it like that. Fantastic. Second down and seven from the eight yard line. Vikings with one timeout remaining. McMahon fade pattern to Carter. No, he's just out on the play that Dan referred to before that he uh, developed in Philadelphia with Cunningham that little fade that time he got behind Wolford but couldn't stay in well he wasn't behind Wolford by much though that's that's pretty good coverage by Donnell Wolford that's uh, if I'm going to run that play I might think about splitting Carter to the other side of the field and give Donnell Wolford a rest because this guy has been there every time and it's not that yeah. Wolford didn't know it was coming no. uh, this is uh, the trademark almost of Chris Carter. That would have had Ryan, it. who actually cut him in Philadelphia, saying something about that's the only thing he can do. Yeah, well, well he proved how wrong that was. Third and seven, and that play clock got all the way down to one. And McMahon throws, and it's knocked oh. down by Wolford. And they bet it's a Pro Bowl first half. They won't figure it out here. I'd, I'd be working the left side of that field. They, the only time they, they go over there, they get Blaylock on a long interference. I was going to say, Blaylock must be thinking, boy, they are scared to death of me. Yeah, but Blaylock's thinking to himself, I'm a pretty lucky guy. <laughs> they keep working on, on Donnell over there. All right. Snap. Do something. There was no opportunity of completing that thing to Smith. 26 yard attempt for Juan Reves. Newsom puts it down and Reves boots it through just inside the left upright again and the Vikings move from their own nine deep enough to get three and with 13 seconds remaining in the first half Minnesota goes up by four 13 to nine that's a World Series score yeah. <laughs> but what a good drive that was and you think how it began and they were thinking probably we're going to run the clock out and go in at halftime but all of a sudden they got a couple of good plays after the Bears had stopped the clock thinking that they were going to get the punt they wind up a three well, we've been talking about Donnell Wolford here and the uh, he, he can make his uh, reservations for a Pearl Harbor tour and uh, Diamond Head and all of that he's halfway to the Pro Bowl after uh, this performance well, if he keeps that up for the rest of the year it's a that's an attention getter mm -hmm. Anthony Blaylock may go too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he may go all year without anybody completing a pass on because they're, they're not even trying to throw him. They're terrified. Frank. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to be wondering why they're leaving him alone. Mm -hmm. Well, the next time I was down there, I'd, I'd try that pattern again to Carter, but I think I'd do it on the left side of the field. I might give Danell a rest. 
Here's Conway. Curtis began the game with a 55 yard run back of the opening kickoff, and that put Chicago in position for the first of three Butler field goals. It's a bouncer taken at the 15 yard line. And Robert Green, the ex Redskin, is out of bounds up at the 33 yard line with eight seconds remaining. Bears coming in three and two after that stumbling start. You know, now they, uh, they sort of have the town to themselves. The Chicago's been consumed, of course, with Michael Jordan's retirement and then the White Sox uh, going into the playoffs against Toronto. And, you know, the Cubs are always good for a story or two. And why not fire a, a manager and hire a new one? And, of course, they, uh, they have done that recently. A couple of weeks ago, they put together a pretty good effort against Philadelphia. They, Eagles, there's Michael Jordan, who, Mr. Chicago, taking in the game tonight. With the Bears sure. took on an undefeated Philadelphia team, albeit without Randall Cunningham, and they started put together that three-game winning streak, and all of a sudden, they're thinking playoffs here. Harbaugh ends the first half with a kneel down, so Minnesota leads it at intermission 13-9, to and we'll return with halftime activities on Monday Night Football after this about 100,000. Mm -hmm. Now it's down on top to, of that. Down to 60,000. Well, this is quite an oval <laughs> in its original shape. Uh, more reminiscent of the Circus Maximus than <laughs> any modern football stadium. Very long and narrow. Gardaki's kick from the eight yard line. Padre Ismael and the Rockets' brother is up to the 38 yard line, and Gardaki himself runs him out of bounds. Let's take a look at the first half stats remember the Bears were minus three on the ground in the first quarter they've improved in that area thanks to that uh, Neil Anderson run among other things and there it is but the Vikings still hold the edge an offensive uh, output that would put the Vikings over 300 yards but 106 for a half is uh, kind of paltry for Chicago but then again pretty much in keeping with the way they've been moving the ball offensively and again the one turnover directly led to the Viking touchdown. And that's the only touchdown in the game at the 38-yard line. And McMahon uh, underthrows it, and it's picked off by Mark Carrier. And Jake Reed went to sleep. Jake Reed just totally went to sleep when Carrier was on the ground. All he had to do was touch him, and that's the end of the play. And he, he just stood there and was daydreaming. There is a marker down. Well, Chris Carter really went for the head of Mark Carrier. All right, let's start this off initially looking at Reed. I uh, guess who's there? Danelle Wolford. Personal foul. This ball so far roughness. underthrown. Number 80. Reed Minnesota. doesn't know. Watch Carter's right After arm. After the interception. Right there. He kind of tomahawks him right on the right ear. So a pair of Viking mistakes right there. To the left, there's that shot by Carter. Well, that the mistake by Reed lets it get started, Frank, and then the mistake at the end by Carter. That would not have happened had Reed just reached over and put the touch on. The ball would have been dead right there. First down at the 33. And Chicago in a two-back set here. And Anderson goes nowhere. Jenkins wraps him up along with Fred Strickland. You know, lost in all of our description of what happened after the interception, what we really didn't touch upon was that was just a horrendous pass by Jim McMahon. I don't know if he lost uh, the ball, lost the grip or whatever. That ball kind of headed straight up in the air. He either tried to throw it a long way and doesn't have the arm to do it or tried to throw the ball so hard he just lost contact with the ball with his fingers and it busted loose. Second and nine at the 32-yard line. Chicago trailing by four, early third quarter. Vikings show blitz, here they come, and McMahon at least turns it into a minimal game, or a hard boy does, to the 31-yard line. McMahon pressured, and uh, did somebody get a, a hand on this? Let's take a look. Hand on his arm. There might have been a hand on his arm. He really had the chance to step up into the pocket. He had a good stride into the football. Something odd happened on that ball. 
And it's third down and seven now for Chicago at the 30-yard line. If anybody got a hand on it, it was Trace Armstrong there, number 93. Nancy Glenn, who was injured in the first half, is back to sprain knee, the safety from Minnesota, back in the lineup. And he tried to get it to the tight end, Gedney, but it was knocked away. Carlos Jenkins was there, along with Roy Barker, and so the Bears cannot capitalize, at least to the extent of taking it all the way in. They're going to try to capitalize for at least a Butler field goal. The last guy clapping we saw was John Tierlink, the Viking defensive line coach, and he's got plenty of room to applaud. These guys are all over the field. That's Roy Barker, who they are so quick. <laughs> They're dealing at the line. Barker off the line of scrimmage that time with the deflection. They're everywhere. And, they, and a guy like Al Noga has gone to Washington, and they don't even miss him. 48 yards, oh. and no, sir. There's a flag down. I didn't see anybody offsides before the play. Nobody seemed Todd, to jump. Todd huh? Scott of uh, Minnesota. Well, so much for what I saw. Well, it's, if, it's, <laughs> if it's offside Minnesota, it's still not a first down, but it'll make Oh, it there it is, all shorter. the way at the yeah. bottom. Is that Carl Lee, 39? Todd it's Scott, Scott I believe. Todd Scott, 38. Okay. Yep. Offside, 38, defense. Still fourth down. He might have even lined up offside, then he started leaning and drew the flag. Pretty strong performance on my part. Huh? I didn't see the offsides, and then I had the wrong guy. That's good. <laughs> Pretty astute analysis. <laughs> <laughs> At least John Tice didn't come back. <laughs> Kevin Butler with a 43-yard field goal right now. Oh, and a fake and good. Dockey's going to hit Butler, oh, no. and he drops the ball. A once-in-a-lifetime shot. Now the nickname is truly earned. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, man. Yep. Well. I Good guess pass by Gardaki. Come on, Kevin. Hey, he's got that piece of tape on the front right now, does Butler. That's a walk-in six for Butler. Well, I'm not sure he would have made it to the end zone. There's a few Vikings uh, on the trail over there. He's not the well, speediest of guys. <laughs> Nonetheless, it would have been a first down. <laughs> I might have been a little yeah. ahead of myself there. But look oh. at that. It couldn't have thrown it better. Right in his hands. Gardaki put it perfectly on the number. There's Smith and Robert Smith's first carry of the second half is a nine yard gain up to the 35 yard line where he's tackled by Sean Gale. That's uh, Gardaki, a high school quarterback. And you, you caught a, a glimpse of Mike Shula, the Don's son, one of the assistant coaches here for Chicago. Yeah, the more you look at Robert Saying, Smith, the more you think they ought to give that ball to him every time. Last week or a couple of weeks ago, there's Mike Shula. Tied in coach. Looks like about 14 or 15. But <laughs> runs in the family, it's in the genes, so to speak. But Smith had 64 yards the last time out on eight carries against Tampa. Second and one, and they give it to Barry Word as they uh, change up. They go to, to Smith, and then they go to the big back Word. And it's a good combination. There. It's a good way to soften things up a little bit by slamming the big guy at him. And don't think Barry Word doesn't have the ability to break one open. This is not just, he's the two big backs in Kansas City were Barry Word and Christian Okoye. Not so Barry Word. This guy's capable of breaking one open. Maybe not for a touchdown, but for good 20, 30 yards. First and 10 at the 40 yard line. Barry Word just across the 40, gain a one. 11.30 to go, third quarter. 13 to 9, Minnesota. Robert Smith, the first five games, they were working him in uh, slowly. And tonight he's carried the ball um, three times more than he'd carried all season. And his touchdown run was a good looking piece of work by a rookie. Robert Smith out of Ohio State. Well, they used to have a, a lot of number one draft choice running backs when Woody Hayes was there, but in recent years it's. And Smith and only Keith Byers is running back pick in the first round. And that's incomplete as Jordan was the intended receiver and Sean Gale with good, tight, legal coverage. About as close as you can get to drawing a flag without doing so. Good coverage by Sean Gale all over the receiver. Avoids the flag. Tough play by Sean Gale. 
I didn't think about Robert Smith. He was a track star at Ohio State also uh, on the four by 100 relay team. It's a great moves for, as a running back that he can really turn it on when he gets the open field. Third and eight at the 41. Chris Carter is the man in motion. And McMahon throws underneath an incomplete. And there is Donnell Wolford, who is like glue on anybody he covers tonight. And this time, the covered man was Jake Reed. Once again, Chicago defensive, defensively really rises up and forces a punt by the Minnesota Vikings. The, the onus here is really falling on the Bears offense to do anything whatsoever. That is good work by Donnell Wolford. That's just that's just shutting things down, saying, please don't bother coming over here anymore. Here's Newsom's kick. A beauty. In the end zone, and Obi's gonna come out with it, which is the last thing in the world you should do. <laughs> and Jake Reed makes the tackle. I mean, the rule of thumb is inside the 10 don't run it out. He ran it out from the end zone. There's Ball, deep in their own territory. The standard. Richard Dent, one of the old guards. Steve McMichael, one of the very old guards. Steve McMichael came to the Bears as a free agent. New England cut him back in 1981. Think of all the years in New England would have liked to have had him. Hmm. Bears take over after Obi runs the punt back from out of the end zone from the 10. Anderson, Neil Anderson up to the 15-yard line. Chris Dolman makes the tackle with 10.30 to go in the third quarter. And it's 13 to 9. Well, Jim Harbaugh, it's, it's a funny thing. You think about the Bears, and they've been around for a million years. One more completion, he will pass Sid Luckman as the all-time leader in that department. And you know Sid is watching tonight. He watches all the Bears game. A legend here in the city. Oh, yeah. Brooklyn's home now, yeah. Brooklyn born and makes his home here now in Chicago and Miami. Second and five, Neil Anderson. Actually, one completion to tie, and then the two, and he'll go by Sid Luckman. Barker and Carl Lee in on the hit. I know, you know they're enjoying this, but uh, Sid, in all honesty, it wasn't a whole lot of completions. So. I'm compelled to say, yes, there, there were not a lot of completions in the history of the Chicago Ooh, Bears. They don't want to ruin your night, Sid. But. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the amazing thing is that when you look at their receivers, and that, of course, is a byproduct of guys completing passes, their all-time leading receiver is still Johnny Morris. You know, from years and years back, Johnny, a uh, good pal and the sportscaster in Chicago for a long time, still holds the mark. I think they've had a Pro Bowl receiver that has gone to Hawaii, has it? Yeah, that's his Dick Gordon, third and five. And that is picked off, intercepted by Audrey McMillan. And that reminds you of the play last year in Minnesota that was picked off by Todd Scott and run back for a touchdown on the audible by Harbaugh. I'll tell you, if McMillan hadn't picked that off, maybe somebody else would have. Ooh. There were not a bear receiver in the area. Not a pretty thing. Well, the closest bear was Gedney, number 84, who broke to the outside, and I don't know if Harbaugh was expecting him to be somewhere else or if it was just an errantly thrown football. But the Bears tonight offensively have been woeful. Reveille to the point after, and that Minnesota defense, number one in the National Football League, results in uh, a touchdown. There's a flag down on the extra point attempt, and here it is again. Easy pickings. You see, Gedney hadn't even turned around yet by the time the ball was thrown. He was in the slot position and broke to the outside. Holding number 59, offense. Will penalize 10 yards and re-kick. I don't believe that's the completion that ties Sid Luckman, is it? <laughs> no. Said you're still safe. That was McMillan's second interception of the year last year. Audrey tied for the league lead with eight interceptions, and McMillan was really open though. Okay. Now Reveille's, and that, uh, well, it turns out to be a costly penalty. The penalty that was called on Ashley Shepard, the rookie from Clemson, puts Reveille out of range, and they can't cash in. 
it could be significant. Makes it 19 to 9. His first touchback of the season. A yard deep into the end zone. This is Curtis Conway coming back with it. Up to the 24-yard line. Let's go back and take a look at that interception for a touchdown. Chris Gedney, the rookie, is lined up right here in the slot. Here's McMillan out here. Gedney just comes up field and breaks it to the outside. It's apparent that Harbaugh expects him to come up field because he comes up firing the ball. Gedney, you see there, breaks the outside, has not even turned around. By the time he does, the ball is almost into the arms of Audrey McMillan. And that is somehow, some way between Gedney and Harbaugh, a miscommunication that results in really a back-breaking touchdown for Minnesota. I think it's probably a read that Harbaugh read and Gedney didn't. He was supposed to, it was his own. He should have pulled up, and he didn't. start. That yeah, wasn't any type of a... Offense prior to the snap. Wasn't any type of a blitz adjustment because the Vikings did not blitz. They only rushed the passer with their front four, so had to be some sort of a coverage adjustment. And that is the way the modern pro passing game has evolved. It's everyone recognizing whether it's a two deep zone or a man to man, different types of overloads one way or another. And everybody better be on the same page or those are the types of mistakes that occur. First and 15, Wojciechowski was whistled for the last infraction and Neil Anderson picks up three up to the 22 yard line. We talk about turnovers, and so often turnovers turn into points. There's the Bears, the opponent's points off of giveaways. First five games, only three. Tonight, 13. A radical turnaround for Dave Wanstead's club. Plus nine coming into this, and 15 turnovers and five touchdowns. Second and 11 up at the 23-yard line. Harbaugh. Flushed out, throws underneath to Anderson. Ridden out up at the 29-yard line. That's going to set up a third and five. And the, the Bears tonight now come into a uh, situation where they yet to convert. As Harbaugh on that completion ties Luckman. But Chicago is 0 for 8 on third down tonight. You're not going to win a lot of games when you're 0 for on third down. And we talked about the turnovers. What the, what the Bears were minus 7 on the giveaway-takeaway ratio the first two games. They come into this game plus nine. In that three-game winning streak, they were plus 16. And that's <laughs> nothing short of extraordinary. Third down and six from the 28-yard line. Harbaugh, forget it, and he's wrapped up, thrown down by John Randall. Boy, and Randall just took mercy on him. Didn't even feel like falling on top of him. Randall that's, is so that's, quick. That's almost embarrassing, Frank. That's, when a guy when a guy sacks your quarterback and almost does it gently Vikings better clear the field here they're going to get caught short look at this this is almost like oh okay I'll just take take a stroll over to the sidelines I won't abuse you too bad Dardaki with a 39 yard punt that's fair caught by Gulliford in the 37 so the Vikings get the ball back 730 to go in the third Minnesota by 10. Whoa, Richard. Woo. <laughs> Scary. Come on. Pre Halloween look from the 37 yard line. This is Robert Smith up to about the 42 yard line. Well, we need to see some. Again, once again, a big stand by the Chicago Bears defensively. They have had. An inordinate amount of pressure placed upon them by the inability of their offensive team to do much of anything here tonight. They trail by 10, and the way the Vikings have been holding up the Bears offensively, you really got to wonder that another score by Minnesota is going to put Chicago in a really bad spot. They just can't afford to allow the Vikings any more points. Second and five, and the catch is made by Smith, who breaks an initial tackle, and with that second effort, may have gotten the first down. The third or fourth effort out. Yep. Bounced off the initial hit. Split two bear tacklers, and uh, he could be shaken up. Robert Smith, slow in arising, and Johnny Greer with an injury timeout. Grabbing here. in the left knee. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I think it was Danell Wolford that took the first shot at him mm. and didn't wrap up and bounced him back and that was a good second effort. That's Roger Craig standing on the sideline. He's next in line to replace Robert Smith. Oh, and there's a good sign. He pops right up. I think Donnell Wolford's going to be the first guy to take a shot at him. Yeah, right there. He is a good open field tapper. Yeah. Watch this effort here. Yep. Next in line was Ron Cox, and couldn't see too much of it in the way of bending, but there's a good sight there for Vikings fans. Holding the left knee. He got the first down with 625 remaining in the third. And a toss to Barry Word. Cuts it back. And looking more like a scat sack than a power back, he takes it down to the Chicago 46 yard line. That is exactly Barry Word's long suit. Carrier getting carried away. But he had nowhere to go on the right side, brought it back to the left, and very wisely turned it upfield, gets good yardage out of it. Everett Lindsay here is, uh, this guy's around the pile a lot, and he's getting after folks. This time he comes up, and uh, he and Mark Carrier exchange greetings. This, this guy might be a rookie, but he certainly does not act the least bit intimidated in this league. Coming in some pretty big shoes, Gary Zimmerman, who went to the Broncos. There's Lindsay, 61, watch him come in. Carrier sees him coming, and they go ahead and pop helmets. On second and three, Chris Carter makes the catch, and that's going to be a first down before he's driven back by Wolford. Robert Smith uh, walking it off and ready to resume action, I'm sure, shortly. Well, let's uh, check in with our newfound friend, uh, Everett Lindsay. This time he's working against Alonzo Spellman. Well, that's good pass blocking by Lindsay. That's uh, good work by the rookie. No wonder Dennis Green is uh, trying to stick with this guy. First and ten at the 39-yard line. McMahon. McDumps. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> Second and ten. Man really forced to throw that away. Good coverage that time on the part of the Bears. Curry among those chasing him then. This was a lot a of case time of to throw it. Nobody there. Nobody there. Let's get rid of it. Ooh. Down I go. Boy, that's a tough shot. The fridge in front and Richard Dent from behind. Mm. Hey, and there's Richard Dent's best friend, yeah. Mike Tice, back in the ball. Game. Second and 10, 430 to go. We're in the third quarter. The Vikings on top, 19 to 9. Each team three and two coming in and trailing only Detroit. The central is Barry Word. Works his way to the 33-yard line. He is tackled there by Dante Jones and Sean Gale. Vikings, uh, as you look at McMichael and the Bear defense, the Vikings in, in effect changing their offensive strategy with Jack Burns last year he had come over from Washington they ran a lot of the the Washington type of offense but Dennis Green wanted to incorporate a, a new style and thus uh, Billick was given the job as offensive coordinator so it's a team in offensive transition third and four at the 33 yard line and McMahon throwing incomplete and uh, Anthony Blaylock wanted an interference call on Anthony Carter and won't get it. So it's going to be fourth down, and if you're looking at a field goal attempt here, it's about 50 yards. Again, good coverage on part of the Bears, and it forced that throw by McMahon. Raves has come in. He's going to attempt a 50-yard field goal. Newsom will spot it at the 40-yard line. Trying to put the Vikings up by 13. And Ravez's kick is short. Well, his best is 51 yards, so he was hanging right at the, the end of his distance, and he comes up 12 short. Credit the Bears' defense. They did what they had to do. They didn't allow Minnesota to score. Minnesota leading by 10. Bears have the ball. 
at Soldier Field in Chicago. And all of the uh, well, all of the NFL owners and representatives are either arriving in town or in town for a big meeting tomorrow as the Bears take over at the 33-yard line. And Harbaugh rolling to avoid some early pressure. Gets away from Dolman. And then tackles from behind by the fleet Henry Thomas. Fleet for a defensive lineman. The National Football League, as you all know, will announce expansion plans. The uh, feeling seems to be, and there are the five cities in contention, Baltimore, St. Louis, Memphis, Charlotte, and Jacksonville. The league has said two teams will be awarded franchises. St. Louis used to be an odds-on choice. Uh, Dan can fill you in on the, the reorganization of the St. Louis ownership situation. A lot of people think Charlotte's got a great chance. A lot of people think Baltimore's got a real good chance. Second and 11. And Harbaugh, too deep, with Memphis and Jacksonville basically considered the outsiders. I think what the NFL has seen, that all five of those cities have really put together viable presentations, have legitimate, well-funded uh, owners groups. Uh, there are different assets to each area when it comes to stadiums. Some of them are, are lacking. Some of them such as St. Louis have a new stadium coming up out of the ground. Baltimore has a new stadium funded ready to be built if they get a franchise. So it's a each one of those areas has a great deal to offer and bring to the table. It's a tough choice for the NFL. Third and nine and Chris Dolman was across the line but he might have been induced because they whistled the play dead which is normally an indication it's an offensive foul. I think it's interesting everyone seems to think automatically two teams are going to be announced tomorrow that isn't necessarily true it could be one but quite a, it, as a matter of fact it could well be one instead of two and there's a lot of concern on the part Offside. of the owners 56 defense he's going unabated toward the quarterback Third down. on his hard count again but again uh, some of the owners concerned about the uh, dilution and not to mention the dilution of the television revenues that will be coming in under the new contract the, the play was whistled dead there. That's right. an interesting thing that Johnny Greer just said because that's uh, what we were talking about in yeah, the first half. Right. If you, get, if you get a clean shot at the quarterback like that, they'll whistle it dead. Oh, there was a good chance. Did you see John Randall flinch? And I think he got Ozine to move. <laughs> Randall not exactly being a gracious winner in that uh, contest. <laughs> <laughs> Much as we saw Neil Smith doing it. 84 and 70 offense. Still third down. John Randall really got this thing started by jumping around. Now take a take a look at this thing. This is John Randall right here. He's going to get Gedney and Ozine to move over here. But watch Randall. This that, that one got him right there. Gedney got uh, caught up uh, in Johnny Greer's call. I didn't see much movement out of out of him, but definitely by Ozine. And if it works once, we're going to see it again. Third and 11. 3:03 to go in the third. Bears seeking their first third down conversion of the night. Waddle was a way, spin Tom. move. Yeah, he was uh, considerably short of the first down to begin with, and now they'll punt again. That's his first reception of the night, is it? Uh, leading receiver for the Bears. Well, that uh, that completion right there, Waddle on the other end, that breaks the Luckman record. Frank, I just want to, uh, you brought up there might just be one team. All indications have been that, that there will be two. I'll be shocked if there aren't two. Uh, St. Louis has a has a new ownership ownership group in place today, and I think that situation has been solidified greatly. Dry that there will be two. Gardaki's punt is fair caught by Gulliford. It's my understanding that it's conceivable they, tomorrow, if they announce something, they could they could announce one team tomorrow instead of you know making a joint announcement and then mm -hmm. continue discussions in regard to the other uh, the other team okay, there are enough camera crews from those five cities floating around well, this town every time you walk out of the hotel there's a camera in front of your face what do you think about this what do yeah. you think about that well you consider that each one of those markets has uh, three network affiliates and an independent yep. and they are all here in Chicago to cover these meetings Charlotte alone, uh, Kenny Wolf is telling us, had five television crews here. Here's Barry Word. Dean of 11. Well, if they ask me, I think the first place they should expand is Lahaina, Maui. You guys second that motion? 
And, and why would that intrigue you? Well, so we Population mass. Every presume. other Monday night game would be held there. <laughs> <laughs> well, why every other? That's a lot of flying. Why not just four in a row? <laughs> Minnesota at the 42, 150 to go, third quarter, 19 to 9. The uh, Vikings on top. Thrilling offensive encounter. From the 42 yard line. Two yard pickup for Barry Word up to the 44. He's tackled by Vincent Smith. Chris, how the kids? Say hi to your mother. <laughs> See you at Christmas. <laughs> Richard Dent, I think, like a lot of the Chicago Bear defensive players, uh, starting to show a little fatigue from being on the field for so long. Why'd you say that about me, Mike? And Richard uh, would be thrilled to know that I called him John for the entire first series. He said, <laughs> Brother John. Brother used to play, of course, with the Saints. Sure. Second down and eight, and Anthony Carter doesn't handle this one, and there's a marker down at the line of scrimmage. Anthony Carter incomplete. A problem that AC has had so far here in the 93 season. It's really struggled holding on to the football. It's, it's a concern of the Vikings coaches that. Uh, is Anthony Carter still the breakaway Holding big threat receiver he used to be? 61 offense. Still second down. Well, that's our much talked about rookie left tackle Everett Lindsay. One of the great talents ever to play the game of college football. Anthony Carter in his career. And then in the United States Football League. And then a brilliant career here, at, uh, here with the Minnesota Vikings. He is 33 years old. Don't be confused by a, a nine-year veteran of the NFL. Second and 18 play for Bo Schenbeck, who uh, is here tonight, visiting us before the game. As McMahon throws screen, Robert Smith, and uh, he's tackled by a half dozen Bears. Just good to see Robert Smith back in the lineup. Robert Maurice Indeed. Douglas trying to assist not him injured up. seriously. Yeah, that's a. He's still got a gimpy though. And we've been told that it was a cramp in his leg. Kind of threw us off course. When I think it's still bothering him too. When their first uh, reaction was to start analyzing his knee and flexing it, that's that's not a good sign. Well, that's good news for Robert Smith. Third down and 14. On what will be the final play of this period. McMahon throws and it's incomplete. Would have been very close to a first down. Jake Reed was right at the stick and the gun sounds to end the third quarter. Minnesota 19, Chicago 9, and back we come with the fourth quarter of Monday Night Football after this from your very own ABC station. We're in Chicago, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff. Monday Night Football, we go to the fourth quarter, and there's a there's a guy who, who makes the signs up right in the middle of the game. <laughs> well, it's always special to see old friends. Newsom begins the fourth quarter with a punt, and, you know, it's a funny thing. Poor Obi, who made the mistake before of running it out of the end zone, calls for a fair catch on a play on which uh, no Viking was within about eight yards of him. So he was gun shy there. Just wanted to haul it in and they started the 17 46 yard boot. And they had a conversation on the sidelines before that one out. Well we saw the Chicago Bears with I believe 106 yards at the end of the first half. They bumped that total all the way up to 123. So offensively a magnificent third quarter for the Bears who have a grand total of four first downs this entire game from they are being choked by the Vikings no first downs in the third quarter no conversions on third down Neil Anderson takes the screen and one of the few big gainers tonight for the Chicago Bears as he gets up to the 33 for a gainer 16 
Good call against a tough rushing front four of Minnesota. The screen and set up beautifully. Hall well, ball under the pressure, draws it into him, and then pops it over to Anderson. Good the set. perfectly designed play, Frank, is a screen to the side of the blitz, and that's exactly what happened. Number 51 there, you see trailing the blade, Carlos Jenkins, came on the blitz. That takes him out of the screen, and that was just a, a good piece of work by the Bears. Uh-oh, Anderson gets wrapped up, Henry Thomas. Welcome back to reality. Dude, these front four guys are so quick. Thomas came all the way from the outside on that play. Did a little maneuver to the outside, came down the line. Watch him, watch 97. Now he'll step around the man trying to block him is Fontenot and recovering so quickly. You're not supposed to be able to run around a guy and exactly. make a block. That's supposed to take you out of the play. Second and 11. Look. Harbaugh throws underneath. That's Gedney. Tight end puts both arms around it. His fumble uh, early in the game led to a Minnesota touchdown. This play uh, earlier on Harbaugh that set up a touchdown return. But Gedney is keep in mind he was a he's a rookie from Syracuse, a third round draft pick that had a broken collarbone in preseason so he really has not been able to work that much just got healthy a couple of weeks ago and he has not put in that much time so he basically is uh, playing his first couple of games third down and, young. and four Barbara 10 out of 19 for only 109 yards and Gedney makes the catch up to the 45 yard line and they finally convert here on third down, and it's as if the crowd begins to sense it. They were 0 for 10, now 1 for 11 on third down. Good catch on the part of Gedney. That ball was going way to his left. He spun around. His body was moving to the right. Made a good catch for a big man. There's 254 pounds. He reverses the thing rather quickly and comes up with the first down on a nice catch. At the 45-yard line. Harbaugh going deep and into a lot of coverage and almost intercepted. It's incomplete. Vancey Glenn nearly intercepted it. And Glenn, remember, he was shaken up before with that knee injury, and he goes down to one knee on the sideline. And he's hurt again. <laughs> I'm surprised he got up as quickly as he did. It looked to me like he fell on the football. After he comes across, that's Tom Waddle. Yeah, nothing will take the wind out of you like falling on the football. I think you're exactly right, Dan. And even with that, he got up and tried to run with it. Oof. On second and ten, Harbaugh throws, caught in Viking territory. That's Curtis Conway, uh, who is short of the first down. And, you know, Conway figured to be a big part of the scene tonight with the injury to Davis and what the Bears wanted to do with the, that Viking defense. So, so tough. This is number one of the lead coming into this. And there is Vincent Glenn on the sidelines. We'll continue to look at him. Vikings number one against the pass also. That's the classic look of a guy who got the wind knocked out of him or banged up his ribs somehow. You see them trying to help him breathe. and. Move his abdominal muscles in and out, up and down. Third and one, that was Conway's first catch of the night. Anderson seeking that first down. And the Bears finally get something going after going over on third down. They picked up two in a row. Hayward leads the way. First down, Chicago with 11.35 to go in regulation. 19 to nine, Minnesota. How do they not call Henry Thomas for being offsides? This guy, this guy is crowding the ball. Look at him in there. He's cutting a fine line. I'll give him credit for that. Take a look at this matchup right here, and this is Thomas. He's in there ahead of his other teammates, and it looks like their helmets are almost touching. Draw, Anderson, nothing. You know what's really surprising to me, Dan, is you know the Bears are saying to the officials, hey, yeah. look at this guy. Yeah. You know, it's not as if uh, they're not being told over and over. Well, I don't know, as an interesting stance, though, Dan, if you look at the ball, it's right under his head, unlike a lot of centers where the ball is out in front of him. And it even makes it look more so yeah. like he's offside. Yeah. No argument there. You take a look at Fonado, the ball is right below his head. 
He doesn't stretch it too far out in front of him. <laughs> second, second. That's the old saying, one hand grenade will get them all. Very intimate setting. Harbaugh scoots down to the 21-yard line. Well, he's got the best per carry Harbaugh. average of anybody who runs the football for the Chicago Bears. He's the only one of their guys with better than a four yard per carry average. And the way things are going, the Bears could do a lot worse than have Jim Harbaugh just drop back there and take off with the football. Yeah, he is a good athlete. Now he runs away from a very speedy linebacker. That's Strickland. They brought him in there because of his speed. And he replaced Mike Merriweather and Harbaugh just left him. From the 21. Here's Anderson going next to nowhere. Fred Strickland stops him after a gain of a yard and a half with 9.45 to play. Yeah, there is no tougher guy that plays this position than I think I've ever seen. Maybe he isn't the most skillful. He's got a lot of good tools, maybe not great tools, but if you want toughness, number four has got it. If we were to put Ironhead on the scale tonight, what do you think he might tip him at? More than any offensive lineman they've got. He might be the heaviest offensive player the Bears have. Second and eight. Look out. Goldman on the move, but he gets it off to Anderson. To the 15-yard line. It's going to set up a very key third and four for Chicago. Third and four, you would expect in the past to be looking, the Bears would be looking for Waddle. He's their possession type guy. But the Vikings have shut him off tonight. Good drive, 69 yards, but it's taken almost six minutes. Keep in mind, this was a 69-yard drive by a team that had 126 yards of offense when it started. And no first downs in the third quarter. And they give it to Anderson, and that doesn't fool anybody. Henry Thomas tackles him for a three-yard loss. Well, if Donnell Wolford for the Bears has been turning in a huge defensive night, Henry Thomas and John Randall, between the two of them, have to, they, they're printing a couple airline tickets for themselves to Hawaii as well. Henry Thomas in particular, look at the quickness, just blowing right by the Bear offensive line. Down after down after down. They're making a five-time Pro Bowler. Oh. Goldman, what kind of ordinary did that? 35-yard Butler attempt, and that is Kevin's fourth field goal of the night from 37 39 55 and now 35 yards so the bears back within a touchdown that next extra point is very important right now 19 to 12. kfc presents doing it right on Monday. 758 to go in regulation 19 to 12 minnesota leads it and the Gardaki kick goes out of bounds at about the five, which means it'll come the out to the 35. Johnny Greer. We have a kickoff out of bounds. And Johnny Greer was the, uh, you know, he's the answer to a trivia question, the first black referee in the history of the National Football League. But, you know, we, we see him all through the years. He has a... He has great control of the game. He's always uh, in control, and, and right now he's right up near the top. There's no question about that. Good job, week after week. Isn't it amazing how the game takes on the character of the officials? Yeah. If you get to know them over the years. First and ten at the 35-yard line. Barry Word. It's dumped after he picks up the first down. Sean Gale makes the hit. Barry Word gets an opening. He can get that 240 plus pounds really motoring. Good tackle by Sean Gale. Vikings up at the 46. Bears trying to get the ball back and hold Minnesota. Yeah, this is where they really need a defensive effort now. They need a big play, a turnover or something. This offensive line has been juggled all season long on the part of the Bears. And they're not looking too happy sitting on the bench. They need a big play defensively right now. Word picks up three. You know, at, at halftime, we were talking about Dave Wanstead and the pushing and shoving continues. And the fact that Mike Dick has helped to facilitate it by not criticizing 
the Bears, uh, local radio and on NBC. But I can't get this confirmed by anybody on the record, but apparently in Ditka's deal, Mike still gets paid this year, but he's not allowed to, from what we understand, criticize management or the coaches. So we got to get Jim Lampley to ask Mike about that on the pregame show next week, and I'm sure NBC really appreciates our producing NFL Live. Well, I believe. Didn't I see that uh, Ditka is actually going to do a game in the booth yeah. involving the Bears? I think the Chicago-Denver game. Oh, that'll be enough. Second and eight, and a one-handed oh. grab is made by Derek Tennell, the tight end. Short gain up to the uh, 49. McMahon ends up on the ground after uh, after that pass attempt. The typical McMahon game, though. I mean, he's not going to hurt yeah. you. He is... Uh, Nothing sensational. There's nothing very flashy. And there's that great catch by Tanella out of UCLA and back second tied in. But man, what he usually will not do is hurt you. He'll keep you in the game and he'll make the play for you. Third down and eight at the 49. Vital defensive play here for the Bears. And Carter makes the catch, but they keep him from getting. The first down, the forward progress to the Chicago 47, pushed back by Mangum and Blaylock. Oh, and we've got a bear player who just is in agony over on the. Blaylock, I believe. That's Blaylock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. And he's got a problem with his hand. Mm -hmm. He looks mm -hmm. like he's got a finger that's mm -hmm. not where it's supposed to be. Ooh, Ooh, it's a dis it. dislocated finger, and we hope I hope that's what it is, quite frankly. Because oh. so that or a wrist or something. He's got a problem with his mm -hmm. with his hand. And so they take a timeout, an injury timeout, with 5:37 left in the fourth. There is Anthony Blaylock over on the Chicago Bears bench as the doctors look at his left hand. Uh, we had a shot that. Pretty graphically showed that it, one of his fingers was dislocated, and there's no need to pass that along to America. I don't think there's any need to uh, show that. It's well, you saw the pain. Uh, better it's than a, better than the knee or an ankle or anything like that. Newsom kicks a line drive, and uh, Obi is so gun shy now. He calls for a fair catch again in a situation where he might have been able to break one off. 28-yard punt. So the Bears, who mounted a long drive that led to another Butler field goal, take over at the 18 in a situation where a field goal is not going to do them a lot of good with 5.17 to go. And I'm sure Denny Green isn't thrilled right now uh, in a game that they have pretty well dominated to be in this position where the Bears have a football, have the football, and a, and a touchdown ties it up. Mm -hmm. I, I think we would much rather have that thing put away. And they illustrated in the last drive that they can move the ball. Those numbers for Anderson, his composite fourth quarter figures this year. Well, and there comes Dolman along with Randall. Boy, those tackles, Randall and Thomas, have been amazing. Dennis feels better now. Randall, Thomas. This is good work by Dolman from the outside. And there's Dolman at the bottom. Randall 93 spins back to the inside, and you can flip a coin as far as which one of them got there first. They're doing this without a whole lot of blitzing yeah. tonight, too. That's how uh, you see a guy with half a sack. That's each one of those guys will probably get a half a sack on them. Second and 16. Here come the Vikings all out blitz, and it goes to Gendy, but a good a good job defensively in covering the play on the blitz to a not enabled. Get me to break one off. It's J.C. Pearson coming up to make the tackle. Uh, Pearson playing up close in place of Vincey Glenn. He's in on the blitz also, and as quickly as Harbaugh dumps it off, he's there. So it's going to be third down and 10 now for the Bears. 4 15 and counting down left in regulation. Vikings on top by seven. And this time it's Roy Barker. Well, not only that, but this pass rush, did you see what the Bears had to do there? They remained in split backs, keeping in two guys. Anderson was there, Hayward was there, only two wide receivers. Now that's hardly a third and ten formation, but in an attempt to try to protect their quarterback, 
They're keeping everybody in, and they still can't do it. it makes it very easy to cover downfield. And, you know, we haven't said enough about the architect of this defense, Tony Johnson. He has done yeah. such a great job. He came in last year from Kansas City as the defensive coordinator. He's just been outstanding. Here's Gardaki's kick. It bounces at the 40. It's uh, not a good kick at all. It's a 29-yard kick, and it gives Minnesota a good position with 3.52 remaining, and the Vikings on top, 19-12. For the uh, Vikings, they're checking Jim McMahon out on the right for a possible concussion, and thus Sean Salisbury comes into the game at quarterback. Of course, we saw him in the playoff game last year against Washington. He started six games for the Emory Place Gannon as a starter a year ago, and they didn't apparently feel that he was going to get the job done, so they brought in Jim McMahon. Salisbury's been around, started in Seattle, cut there, Indianapolis cutting, played a couple years in Winnipeg, and he's the quarterback right now as McMahon is being looked at on the bench. Former USC star. His word. Now the Bears have to start thinking about taking their timeouts to conserve uh, the clock, and they do. Chicago takes a timeout here. And uh, what they have to do clearly is stop them, keep them out of field goal range. There is uh, Tony Dungy, and he's one of those guys that every time a job comes up, they keep talking about Tony Dungy's going to. Going to get it. He's going to be in the, in the hunt. And one of these days, he is going to get it. He has done some job at this Minnesota defense. We saw it last year, and they went a long way, turned the season around, turned the football team around to 11 and 5 a year ago. And one of the principal reasons was the defense. It certainly has kept the struggling Minnesota Vikings football team offensively in the hunt here in the. Central Division of the NFC. The I think he played great. I think if Jim Harbaugh had a vote, he'd like to see Tony become the head coach somewhere over in the yeah, AFC. Else, yeah. <laughs> Al, uh, it's, it's been a rough night for Harbaugh. Seven times he's been sacked. Well, last week we saw Elway sacked seven times by the Raiders. And uh, seven tonight is Barry Word. Six games. Like, Tells you a story about an offensive line that's been shattered with injuries, and Jim McMahon is been asking him the usual questions, trying to determine whether or not he does have a concussion. Uh, but we've played, covered a lot of games in which Jim McMahon just he just didn't finish it. And it is a concussion. They are confirming. Next week we go back to Buffalo. Bills five and one come off the win uh, yesterday over the. Jets and well the Washington Redskins have become uh, an interesting story as to what's going on with the Redskins a great opening night win against the Emmett Smithless Cowboys but since then no victories one in five and we'll find out what goes on next week uh, from Rick Stadium and Orchard Park third down and eight now for the Vikings. They lead 19 12 337 and Barry word and Barry word has just about driven the nail in except for a flag that would have been a first down pending the flag Dante Jones makes the hit and uh, Chicago is still breathing because it's coming back. Mm. Holding number 60. Offense. Still third down. Adam Schreiber. I think he was locked up with Steve McMichael. The old vet for the Bears and Chicago gets one more chance because that uh, that first down run pretty much would have done it. Especially with the timeout situation. Yeah. There's Schreiber right there and that's McMichael number 76 and spins him around and gets called for the hold. Third and 18. Here's Barry Word and uh, Chicago stops him at the 39. And does Chicago want to take its last time out? They are going to conserve it. Save that one plus the two minute warning, and it's fourth down and yeah. 10. And that's where a big back starts to really prove his worth at this stage of a ball game. Even though that doesn't result in a first down, you could see the 
the, the way that people bounce off him, the pile starts to move forward a little bit. And slamming a guy like that into the line repeatedly over the course of an evening takes takes a lot out of a defensive team. And so Blaylock back in the game. Broken finger notwithstanding. Flag oh. is down. Here's Newsom's punt. I think that's the Bears. Obie's going to let it bounce. And it's going to be down at the five yard line by Brent Novoselsky. That could put the Vikings almost within field goal range if it does go against the Bears. The Bears were across the ball. The only question is whether they got pulled. It'll be very close to field goal range. And they were not. They were just playing offside. Myron Baker, number 91, the rookie. Offside. Right defensive end. It's declined. And I think First they down. just decided too much for Fod Reves. Well, His career best is 51 yards, and that would have exceeded that. Well, and the, and the longer the field goal, the more apt it is to be blocked because the kicker is trying to get a little bit lower trajectory with the ball. And besides, when your defense is playing the way the Vikings defense has been playing and your offense is playing the way the Bears have been playing, this is a long way from Bader. Don't the Vikings have a string of two games with a safety running for them? Yeah, you're right. And no team in the history of the league has ever had three games in a row with a safety. And the Vikings have a shot at it here. Well, not a whole audience. Yeah, right. Yeah. Here's Anderson up to the 15-yard line. Anthony Parker makes the tackle. Now the Bears have one timeout and the two-minute warning. If the Bears tie this game, I will have seen it all. Yep. We've seen some strange things here. Yes, we have. Here's Anderson. I mean, that night against the Jets, who would have believed that? They looked uh, woeful offensively that night two years ago, and then they scored on the last play of regulation. Neil Anderson did. And that overtime wildness. And here's the two-minute warning. So the Bears are 77 yards away with two minutes to go and one time out of their disposal. And today, Sidewalk Cafe is going. You walk around and you just think it's great to be alive on a yep. day like today. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh. If you two would spend more time in the Midwest, you'd find out it's like that around here <laughs> oh, sure. a lot. Okay. <laughs> Can't take us anywhere. Two <laughs> coast jockeys here, <laughs> east and west. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could you could not be today? Just perfect in Chicago. Great night. And we'll find out about the Bears now. Two minutes to go. 19 to 12. Minnesota second down and two at the 23-yard line. Bears with one timeout remaining. Harbaugh throwing on the run and wide open is Gedney and the tight end has a big first down up to the 47 yard line. Oh, what an effort by Harbaugh. Hubba hubba hubba. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen this before. Yes. At the 47. 140. Four man front for the Vikings. Harbaugh. He gets to the Minnesota 46 yard line and picks up six. Somehow or other they should make some kind of attempt to get the ball in the hands of Curtis Conway. He split to the left. They've had a hard time doing it tonight. They wanted to do it. They've gotten it to him only one time. This time it's underneath. It's Neil Anderson. Forward progress should be enough for a first down. And it is at the 41. And once that now has to spend his final timeout with 61 seconds left in the game. Well, 41 yard line again. You know, we talked about Conway, the speed guy, the number one draft choice, and all of that. And they want to work him into the into the action a lot more. And naturally, they have a, a perfect opportunity with the season-ending injury to Wendell Davis. But the uh, that Viking secondary, combined with that fierce pass rush, is just rendered him next to an operative tonight more the pass rush than anything because they have not been giving a lot of double coverage we've seen a lot of zone but we have not seen a lot of doubling of the rookie speeds to out of USC well Harbaugh let's be serious now we're talking about a guy that goes back plants 
and then is on the move one direction or another because the pocket is collapsing all around him. This is not a guy who's had a chance to really set and deliver more than a handful of times tonight. And that's that's John Tierlink right there, the defensive line coach of the Vikings, and his guys have dominated. This is as good a performance by a defensive line collectively as you're going to find. First and ten at the 41-yard line. 101 to go. No timeouts remaining for Chicago. Harbaugh pressured by Dolman, sacked by Dolman at the 46-yard line. Number eight. Number eight. Chris Dolman outshined somewhat by his less celebrated compadres there in that front four. Makes a big play for them. Five-time Pro Bowler. Second and 15 now. Harbaugh slings it out here trying to get out of bounds is Conway and he is able to at the 38 yard line still I have a third down coming up here with 38 seconds remaining. Well but a good play Harbaugh to Conway it picked up yardage and also stopped the clock. 38 yard line will be third down and seven. Jim's starting to show the wear and tear of playing on a grass field against a tough defensive team. A little grass around the helmet. Not many parts of his body that have been soiled. There's Ironhead. You see Hayward on the left side. You know he's going to help block. Third and seven. He stays in to help out and takes Dolman out of the play. And then he, he catches the pass. And Ironhead takes it to the 25. First down. The time is of the essence. Harbaugh will go up there and spike it here if he can. Vikings in no hurry, obviously, to help stop the clock. And now the officials stop it for the moment. Start it again. 20 seconds remaining. It'll be second down and, in effect, second and 25. A flag came flying in there at the very end of that. I think the Bears, the Bears were not set offensively. There is no infraction on the play. Good call. Okay. All right. It is now second down at the 25-yard line with 20 seconds remaining. Minnesota leading by seven. No timeouts left, right? This is. I mean, it's so eerily similar to that Jets game. Oh, it was. This point. It's amazing. They have no timeouts remaining. Is that right, Al? That's right. No timeouts right. left. And now uh, Greer and the line judge and another official confer again. They may be conferring on timeouts. There is no infraction on the play. The ball was killed prior to the snap. It's still first down. Ball was killed prior to the snap. Well, it could not be first down. Look, it can't be. I mean, it has to have been a play. There has to have been a play. That snap was the first down. How about yeah, how, I mean, how is it, that possible? It's impossible. That that's impossible. I mean, it has to be second down. I don't understand that. I tell you, it won't matter. Yeah. Well, with 20 seconds to go, it's it's probably moved. But Harbaugh throws. Oh, and it's picked off at the goal line by Jack Del Rio. And it's a touchback. Chris Gedney was the tight end. He was over the middle. Harbaugh threw it right down Main Street, and Del Rio was there. And the Vikings can start thinking about Sunday night. Detroit at Minnesota. And that'll be a battle for the lead in the NFC Central. Boy, a good play by Jack Del Rio, dropping all the way back there. Well, but really, Jim Harbaugh position. didn't have much choice, Frank. He's got to try to no. force the ball into the end zone. Only three seconds remain on the clock. He didn't have the luxury of throwing any sort of a dump off or scrambling or anything like that. Oh, now Richard Dent. Oh, look at Richard Dent. Chris Carter. <laughs> Chris Carter. Very wisely was moving showing, out. Uh, showing a great deal of wisdom there. <laughs> Jack Del Rio 
came up on plan B from Dallas last year and has turned into a major impact player for the Vikings. Oh, no. Man. With that 4 3 they play. Now well, we got some fans on the field. Three seconds remaining. All it takes is one more kneel down. And yeah. It's goofball time, so. Oh, and Ed, Al's not referring to Jim McMahon. No, there. No, no, no. Right. Thank you, yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't mind. Vikings tonight, eight sacks. The team record is nine, and they've done that on three occasions, most recently in 1970. So they came within one. My man George Hill is telling me that maybe the, the fans are warming up for the World Cup. <laughs> Running on to the field, I'm sure, sounds like a really nice idea. Right up to the, right up yep. to the time they handcuff you and drag you off to jail. Yep. And Somewhere on the way up that tunnel, with your hands cuffed behind you, it must start to dawn on you that maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. Nope. But the Vikings have defeated the Bears twice this season: 10-7 in Minnesota and 19-12 in the Windy City. They go to four and two. The Bears go to three and three, and we go to Buffalo next week. It's Buffalo against Washington. Talk to you from Orchard Park next Monday. Until then, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. Good night from Chicago.